ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Tonight, Major League home run leader Mark McGuire and the Oakland Athletics. Check out George Brett and the Kansas City Royals. For 19 years, he's been one of the best in the game. And now George Brett has much to reflect upon. Batting titles in three different decades. An American League MVP award. 13 All-Star selections. And a reputation as a fiery competitor. He looks to add just one last milestone, his 3,000th hit. The Oakland Athletics All-Star outfield of Ken Seiko, Ricky Henderson, and Dave Henderson has yet to play one game together this year. But manager Tony La Russa can wait no longer. With a cast of lesser lights to lead them, the A's have been ready, willing, and able to get their hold back on first place. Mike Ford back, helped them take three of four from the Blue Jays last weekend. And in this week's showdown with the division-leading Twins, Eric Fox in a ninth inning, three-run homer. And that, together with a pair of homers from Mark McGuire, set the stage for Dennis Eckersley to finish off the three-game sweep in Minnesota. For a while, anyway, they were back in first place. tenure in first place was short live Friday night in Kansas City in the 10th inning Greg Jeffries base hit knocked the A's back into second the Royals won the ball game six to five then yesterday bad blood Ricky Henderson hit by the game's first pitch two pitchers were ejected five men were hit the Royals won it eight to four now they try to bowl their way to a sweep over the athletics It's a warm, muggy night at Royal Stadium in Kansas City. A great night for a ball game. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball featuring the Oakland Athletics and the Kansas City Royals. For Oakland, they had a taste of first place, but with Minnesota winning again today, the Athletics will need a victory here to avoid falling two and a half back of the world champion Twins. Hello, everyone. I'm John Miller. And we want to say congratulations to all of the new inductees up in Cooperstown into baseball's Hall of Fame. Raleigh Fingers who used to play for the Oakland Athletics, Tom Seaver, and Hal Newhauser, great left-hander, and of course the late Bill McGowan, all going into the hall today. Now my partner Joe Morgan, he's up there too. That's where he belongs in this weekend. He's up there amongst them with all of those baseball immortals. But we're in very good shape because Dave Campbell, you certainly know him from Wednesday Night Baseball with Gary Thorne, is here. And Dave, a little uh, fireworks yesterday, five batters hit. You think there's going to be any carryover of the, the bad feeling that was generated here yesterday? John, I really don't think so. These are two professional teams. They both play hard. And I know Tony La Russa has always been kind of an eye for an eye, but I think they got it settled yesterday. The only thing that might trigger it is if one of the uh, guys coming out of the bullpen decides to be kind of a wild cowboy and start things. But I don't look for anything to happen. All right. And when you think of the Oakland Athletics, you think of the Bash Brothers, the big sluggers, guys like Jose Canseco, and, of course, Mark McGuire, who is really the man who has been getting it done this year. 32 home runs, most of the majors, including number 32. This was Friday night right here at Royal Stadium. It was a big one, too. It tied the ball game in the late innings. Mark McGuire is having a sensational season, Dave, for the Oakland Athletics. He really is. He's been consistent all year despite playing with a little bit of a knee problem, but it really has been the little guys that have kept the A's in this thing. Uh, the Eric Foxes and the Randy Reddys and the Mike Bordicks, but it all boils down to what Carney Lansford said the other day, and he says, we don't play to win or lose. We play to get the Eck in the game. <laughs> Dennis uh, Eckers play. All right, so the Eck is coming in. It's always good news for the athletics. Now, there's another great name out here today. He's chasing 3,000 hits. We're talking about George Brett of the Kansas City Royals. Brett always a hard-nosed player, and yesterday in that ball game, Brett wasn't involved in any of the, the hitting uh, the batters by pitches, but on this steal attempt, look what happened to Mike Bordick. Well, George Brett plays for a guy by the name of Hal McRae that was one of the hardest sliders in the history of baseball, and I think Hal's philosophy was, hey, if they hit you, take it out on somebody else, but at least you don't uh, lose a player that way. All right, and George Brett now needs only 64 more hits for 3,000. He'll be hitting third in the order tonight. We'll keep an eye on him. Bob Welch, the great veteran going for the athletics, and rookie Dennis Moeller making his second start for Kansas City morning in Kansas City but it's a beautiful night with some scattered clouds as the Royals try and sweep the Oakland Athletics this is John Miller along with Dave Campbell again the Joe Morgan up at Cooperstown mingling with the other Hall of Famers for the Athletics Ricky Henderson maybe one day he'll be up there the DH Carney Lansford third base 
Jose Canseco trying to get it going again in right field. Mark McGuire having the tremendous year. Terry Steinbach, he's having an excellent season, the catcher. Randy Reddy in left field. Willie Wilson, the former Royals player in center field. Mike Bordick, what a year. And Walt Weiss at shortstop batting ninth. And pitching for Kansas City, the rookie left-hander, Dennis Moeller. And uh, he's up against it against this Oakland ball club. 24 years old, no relation to the former Dodger pitcher, Joe Moeller, although his dad, Fred, did pitch in the St. Louis organization. Kind of a crafty-type left-hander, making his second big league start. Checking the defense, it will be. We got the A's defense up there, so we'll drop that for a second. This will be the Royals defense that we should be looking at. A little sneak preview for when Oakland takes the field. So here we go now. Dennis Moeller to face Ricky Henderson. Moeller made one start earlier this week and gave up four runs and four hits in four and a third innings, including two home runs. It's interesting tonight. We've got the left-handed Moeller against Oakland, and Oakland will have nine consecutive right-handed hitters in the order. And there is ball one to Ricky Henderson, including the three... Uh, the switch hitters in the order and Kansas City against the right handed Bob Welch will have nine left handed hitters in the order. Ricky hits one deep down the left field line and foul. And the count is one ball and one strike. Dennis Moeller is out of the same high school that produced Brett Saberhagen. In fact, they were both signed by the same guy, and that's Guy Hanson, the pitching coach currently of the Kansas City Royals. He does not throw like Brett Saberhagen. A lot of off-speed pitches has to be very fine in the strike zone. So Dennis Moeller with his pitching coach Guy Hanson, the man that signed him, watching from the Royals dugout. One ball, one strike to Ricky Henderson. He's got a, a hamstring problem. And the pitch is inside. Now, he played left field in the first two games of this series and was in uh, Tony LaRusse's original batting order as the left fielder for this game, but... He's got some stiffness. He hadn't played for about a week. The, uh, the lack of playing time and uh, the turf to make a guy a little stiff. Well, John, that's one of the great things about the designated hitter rule. I'm not greatly in favor of it, but at least it allows the stars to still get in the lineup if they're not feeling 100%. So I think that is a plus that the DH brings. If I bought a ticket to a ball game, he's one of the guys I want to see in there. Any way they can get him up to the plate. This one is foul on the third base side, picked up by Jeffries, two and two to Ricky Henderson. Let's take a look at that Royals defense. You see Greg Jeffries, he's made 17 errors at third base. David Howard is at shortstop. Curtis Wilkerson filling in, doing a nice job at second base. And Wally Joyner at first. Kevin Kozlowski gets the start after three hits yesterday. He's in left. Brian McRae, the manager's son in center, and Jim Eisenreich in right. Brent Main is the catcher, and Dennis Moeller is on the hill. Two balls, two strikes to Ricky Henderson. Ricky... Not having a, a real great Ricky Henderson season with all of the injury problems. He's missed 38 games this year. Still, he's got 25 RBIs. And yeah. an on-base average of 417. That one has hit pretty well. And Kozlowski. One away. Ricky Henderson gone. This series started Friday night in Kansas City in a 10-inning game. Six to five winners. Meacham won it over Parrott. Jeffries had a big night. Four for six. A homer and a triple. And he drove in the winning run in the 10th inning. Then yesterday, eight to four, Kansas City won it. Rather astonishingly, all things considered, as they had uh, their first two pitchers each thrown out of the game by the second inning. And they still, although even trailing at that point, came back and won the game. Now the Royals have pounded out 29 hits in the last two games, and Tony Russo said, hey, we got to get better starting pitching than that if we're going to be in the hunt. Carney Lance for the hitter. It's Tony LaRusso tries to work some magic to get the Athletics one more postseason appearance with this group. That is a fair ball, and Jeffrey's got him. Greg Jeffries is not really a natural infielder. He does not have real smooth hands, but he does show pretty good jumping ability here. We mentioned earlier he has 17 errors, but he climbs the uh, ladder to make a fine play and throw out Carney Lansford. So two big outs and Moeller facing the Bash brothers and that group. Probably important for him to have a good first inning. Jose Canseco the hitter. 
And Seiko had a shoulder problem that put him in the disabled list before the All-Star break. And of course, he has an ongoing back problem, which he aggravated while lifting some weights uh, recently. And most of the Oakland hitters, all through that lineup, hitters and pitchers, have something wrong with them. The curveball misses to Jose Canseco, ball one. A trainer's room is a very busy place before games. Yeah, our researcher, Peter Pascarelli, went down and talked to Barry Weinberg, the trainer. He came back with a list that I finally looked at Peter and said, is there anybody that's not getting treatment? He yeah. said, yeah, Jamie Quirk. <laughs> There's a pitch in there for a called strike. And even then, Barry Weinberg says the uh, Jamie Quirk treatment is that he shaves his bats before the games. There's Barry Weinberg. Barry's arms are bigger this year from working on those guys. Tommy Reynolds, uh, one of the athletics coaches there with Barry. One ball, one strike to Canseco. Canseco does have four homers in his last 10 games. Canseco uh, with 19 homers for the year. Not a bad year for most guys, but for Canseco, it's eight. What's the matter with this guy? I like Jose smiling because that pitch looked like it was right there and Brett Bean was wolfing at the umpire. Canseco turned around. One thing that Moeller likes to do is work inside and we may have to see how that works because of all the problems we had yesterday with the five hit batters. Three and one the count to Canseco. Two down, nobody on. McGuire would be next. The outfield very deep. A little bit of a breeze blowing into the ballpark tonight. Canseco draws the walk and so McGuire will bat. John, that's one of the things the Oakland A's do very well. They're fifth in the American League in hitting, but sometimes they've been as low as 12th in batting average, but they always have a tremendous on-base percentage, and when you have the sluggers that can go deep, get a couple of walks in front of them, it's the same thing as hitting 265. So they do get a lot of base on balls. It doesn't always show up in the stats unless you look down to the on-base percentage. Now McGuire, 32 homers, 81 runs batted in, hitting 273. Ball one, Moeller. Has lost the strike zone with the sluggers up there. Canseco, by the way, we mentioned Ricky Henderson has missed 38 games this year. Jose Canseco has missed 31 games. And that's two thirds of the starting outfield. Right to Jeffries. And Canseco is forced out at second base. Wilkerson taking the throw. One man left for the Athletics. Oakland nothing. Kansas City is coming up. Campbell back at beautiful Royal Stadium out here in the countryside in Kansas City. No score. And the Royals are coming to bat. Here is Hal McRae's batting order. Greg Jeffries, followed by Wally Joyner. And then George Brett, 64 hits away from 3,000. Jim Eisenreich getting cleanup. He's not a power hitter, though. Brent Main, the catcher. Curtis Wilkerson's had a big series, six for seven. Kevin Kozlowski, a rookie in left field. Brian McRae is in center field, a switch hitter, and a switch hitting David Howard is the shortstop. And all nine of them will be batting left-handed against this man, the veteran, Bob Welch. 35 years old, 15th Major League season, and Bob Welch has no complete game so far this year. In fact, he's only gone to the seventh inning in seven out of 14, but he is coming off a tremendous performance at Minnesota this past Monday. So Bob Welch now ready to face Greg Jeffries. Jeffries has been truly on a tear lately. Had the four hits here Friday night and then two more hits yesterday. And in his last 13 games, he is 25 for 57. And is also 13 for his last 22. Maybe the Mets want him back. Willie Wilson. One away. Jeffries, of course, coming over here with Keith Miller and Kevin McReynolds for Brett Saberhagen and Bill Pakoda. The first baseman, Al McRae, in his second year as manager of the Royals, Carter. took over in early May of 1991. Right off to that horrendous 1 and 16 start, but they've played four games over 500 since, so things settling in a bit here, although they still feel they've got a ways to go to contend. Sunday night baseball sort of got them going. Here is uh, Wally Joyner. He whacks one in the right field. Canseco going back. It's over his head up against the bullpen screen. And Joyner is into second with a stand-up double. Jose did not get a good read on this ball at all. The first step he took was in. Then he took a couple of slow steps back and all of a sudden realized it was over his head. Royals first pitch hitting against Bob Welch. You see Jose finally realizing that ball is going to be over his head. He gets the ball back in to hold Joyner to a double. 
he is now tied, I believe, with Edgar Martinez going into today's action at least with 30 doubles for the American League lead. Although, let's see, double checking, Edgar did hit number 31 today. Leading the American League in hitting. The Royals always have guys up among the leaders in doubles. This is just a great ballpark in which to hit doubles and triples. And they lead the American League 202 doubles now. That was uh, 202nd by Wally Joyner. This guy's hit a few in his life as well. And, and 24 this year. George Brett batting 271. Look at the bat is going for extra bases down the right field line. <laughs> Lynn Jones, the first base coach, picks it up down there. Oh, and on the count to George Brent. Let's well, see, the hard slide yesterday, now he's going to throw a bat at McGuire. Now, just kidding, folks. That one just got away from George. George Brent, 64 hits away from 3,000 hits. And when the Royals were struggling at the beginning of the year, losing 16 of their first 17, George Brent is struggling right along with them. Since that time, he's hit uh, right around 300 since those first 17 games. Joiner, the runner at second, one out, no score. And Brett's uh, longtime teammate, Willie Wilson, has this one. And Joyner will go over to third base on the play. Bob Welch doesn't have the fastball. He did it one time, but he's become an even smarter pitcher than he was early in his career. Just turning the ball over, that was kind of a half-speed fastball, but he just turned it over a little bit. Uh, Brett went to hit it and all of a sudden realized he was just going to have to extend the arms a little further. Two-down runner at third, and the batter will be Jim Eisenreich. Eisenreich, the left-handed hitter, batting 272. Only two home runs, even though he is hitting cleanup. The Royals have only hit 48 home runs this year. That's the lowest figure in all of Major League Baseball. So it's very unusual when they hit one, especially in this ballpark. And uh, off-speed delivery misses. But Kansas City played 50 games here, and they've hit 13 home runs here. Well, John, I think now that they've moved the fences in in St. Louis and the Astrodome down in Houston, I don't think there's any doubt this is the toughest place to hit them. Mike Bordick throws out Eisenreich. One hit, one left. We'll see Steinbach when we come back. No score after one. And you see the uh, standings over there in the National League West, they got quite a race going. Although Atlanta is trailing San Francisco 4-2 to two in the sixth inning of the second game out at Candlestick Park. If that holds up, then the Braves and the Reds will be in a flat-footed tie for first place over there, which seems uh, only fitting as uh, closely matched as they have been. Here we go now, second inning for Oakland. Uh, they need a win to draw back to within one and a half for first place Minnesota. Minnesota defeated Milwaukee today, five to nothing, on a four-hit shutout by Scott Erickson. There's ball one to Terry Steinbach. He's hitting 299. Nine homers, 37 batted in. And Dennis Moeller throws him a strike. One ball, one strike. Moeller, seven and five in Omaha, 2.48 ERA at 18 starts down there before getting called up. One and two now to Steinbach. He'll be followed by Randy Reddy and Willie Wilson here in the inning. The Athletics, for some reason, just kind of rolling along a few games back in the Twins, certainly looking nowhere near the overall ball club Minnesota is. When you talk to baseball people, that's what you heard. So Minnesota's got a little bit of everything, great balance. Two and two to Steinbach, and yet, when you hear the same thing about the Blue Jays, then in a six-game stretch, Oakland last week defeated Toronto, three, and Minnesota, three, beat those two great ball clubs six in a row. Base hit for Steinbach. So the Athletics uh, still know a little bit about winning and winning big ball games in uh, pressure situations. Well, it, is. it is a great night for a ball game here at Royal Stadium. 80 degrees, a lot of humidity, 72%, a chance of showers and thunderstorms, although not during Sunday night baseball. Of course, Just a little bit of wind. John, you mentioned about the good teams, but against Detroit, Cleveland, and New York this year, the A's are 14 and 16. They're 46 and 26 against the rest of the league, but three teams that a lot of people feel maybe three of the weaker teams in the entire American League they've really struggled against. As Tony La Russa said before the ball game as to 
why they could beat Toronto and Minnesota six in a row and then come in here and lose twice. He just says, hey, that's baseball. That's the nature of the game. Foul ball out of play, 0-1 to Randy Reddy. Just about every club in baseball has had a good stretch. Cleveland's been playing very good baseball ever since their bad start. Uh, the only team that really hasn't had a great run, I think, so far is Seattle. California playing very good baseball right now, but almost everybody has one or two stretches during the season when they play very well. Ball on the count to Reddy. He had a grand slam the other day. That's a foul ball. 0-2 the count. No score in this game. We're in the second inning. Kind of an interesting game. They had brought Dennis Eckersley in in the eighth inning. The score was five to one. It was not a save situation when Eckersley came in, but Reddy hit the grand slam homer in the ninth, and they got Eckersley out of there in a hurry. They brought in Jim Corsi to finish it off. That was Monday night against the Twins and Bob Kipper. That is foul. Oh, and to the count. Yeah, very interesting too because Eckersley himself said saves me nothing in a pennant race. Of course, he had just signed a two-year multi-million dollar contract extension. I guess they, they mean a lot less when you've already got the contract, <laughs> but he would have had to have finished that game to have gotten a save. They saved him, though, when they blew it open, and then he saved each of the next two games. Great thing. Maybe that little extra rest, maybe it, maybe it paid off. Oh, I'm sure it did. The great thing was that when Eckersley signed the contract with the A's, he said one of the reasons I wanted to sign this is Somebody else might use me more than one inning. In the next two days, Tony Russo brought him in in the eighth inning. <laughs> Once he had him in the bowl. And that's a foul out of play. Off to the right. 0-2 the count. Randy Reddy, a real scrappy type player. Never has hit a lot of home runs, but he has more walks in his career than strikeouts. Good contact hitter, and he'll battle. He has a lot of quality at bats, and he usually gets a piece of the baseball. Willie Wilson. Waiting his turn in the on deck circle. Really a, a fourth outfielder for the Athletics who has ended up being one of the big three most of the time with all of the injuries they've had out there. He's played more games, a lot more games, than any of the starting three outfielders. He's done a very good job. He's patrolled center field. He hasn't hit great and he hasn't provided any power, but he's provided very solid defense in center field for Oakland when they've had to go with a lot of guys maybe playing out of position. I mean, Randy Reddy playing left tonight is not an outfielder by trade. One and two the count. Two and two. So Moeller unable to put Reddy away here. The Athletics with all of the, 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 the big talent. Guys like Harold Baines and Jose Canseco, Mark McGuire, Ricky Henderson, Dave Henderson, Carney Lansford, the list goes on. And you have guys like this, Randy Reddy and Eric Fox, Mike Bordick, Lance Blankenship. Base hit for Randy Reddy. They have been very responsible for keeping the A's in it. Let's go now to Chris Myers. All right, Budweiser, Texas to San Francisco. John, you mentioned it was 4-2 to two giant. Top six, Otis Nixon off. Litton's glove, and Greg Olson is in. It's 4-3 now. Atlanta still trails. They're still batting in the top half of the sixth of game two. Let's go back to John. So we'll keep you updated on all of that uh, stuff going on out there in San Francisco. Also, a ball game going on in Texas tonight, the Texas Rangers and the uh, California Angels. Two men on for Oakland in the second inning. Steinbach at second, ready at first. Here's Willie Wilson. And he shows bunt and takes ball one. John, you mentioned Atlanta. We talked about Cincinnati. They meet on ESPN's Wednesday night baseball down at Fulton County Stadium. So that red hot Western Division pennant race will be right there on Wednesday night. All right. I'd like to be there myself. One ball and no strikes. Wilson not bunting here, but taking ball two. Two and oh the count. Bowler not seem to, seeming able to make that one quality pitch. He got ahead of Randy Reddy 0 and 2, but couldn't put him away. Reddy got the count back to 2 and 2 and got the hit. Now he's behind Willie Wilson. Two balls, no strikes. Royal still pulled in at the corners. Jeffries at third. Joiner at first. Willie swings away into right center field. And there is Eisenreich. Each runner went halfway, and they have to return. So Wilson is retired. We've got one out here in the second inning from Royal Stadium in Kansas City. ESPN's Sunday night game of the week. The Athletics and Royals, no score. This is John Miller, along with Dave Campbell, Joe Morgan, is off in Cooperstown. 
rubbing elbows with all of his fellow Hall of Famers. John, one of the things the Oakland A's usually do very well is run the bases intelligently, but Terry Steinbach did not tag up that time. He could have walked the third base. Eisenreich has a bad arm. That ball was very playable for Eisenreich. Steinbach did not get a good read on it. That could cost the A's this inning. I was surprised when he was just going back to the bag after the catch instead of heading on his way. Here is Mike Bordick. We were talking about him. Bordick is batting 307. Two homers, 32 batted in. Started the year at shortstop because of an injury to Walt Weiss. Then moved over to second base. That's where he is tonight. He's played well with the glove and has hit extremely well. This could be two. Jeffrey, a little trouble getting out of the glove. The relay to first. It's not in time. Mistake by Jeffries. Should have gone to third base. He had the play right there and then on to first. So both teams have made a mistake. Steinbach, the base running mistake. And Jeffries there. All he had to do was run over and touch third and throw to first. He double clutched the ball and it cost him a double play. Look how close he is to the bag. I mean, he's going right towards it. Very easy just to step on the bag. But instead, he double clutched. And it cost him the play. As you see, Bordy just barely makes it. There he grabs second time, third time. He has to reach in, and it cost him a double play. Let's see if Walt Weiss can make him pay. Looks like that extra time also enabled Reddy to get right on top of Wilkerson, and his throw back to first didn't have much on it. First and third down. Here is Walt Weiss hitting ninth in the order, batting 238, a switch hitter. Ball one from Dennis Moeller. Struggling a little bit, nine for his last 50, hitting 180, but he's pretty good in the clutch generally. One ball, no strikes. It's a little lazy fly ball, and Brian McCray takes it. So Oakland had two on and nobody out, but they're unable to score. No score after one and a half. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball is brought to you by Bud Dry. Dry brewed so it drinks life, yet satisfies completely. And by ESPN Home Video, producers and distributors of slow pitch softball. Available at video and retail stores nationwide. Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, a lot of beautiful areas in uh, Kansas City. We've been down in the uh, what they call the plaza area, which is very nice, very chic. Just like you and I, Dave. Yes, that's our kind of place. Here's a curveball to Brent Maine, and he takes ball one. Brent Maine used to play for his dad in college. Uh, Mike, the uh, coach at Orange Coast Junior College. Got another interesting connection there. John Watson's son, Dusty, plays for Mike Maine at Orange Coast County. He did last year. And of course, John was the manager when Brent came to the big leagues here in Kansas City. You mean Duke Watson has a son named Dusty? Dusty, of course. <laughs> Over from short is Weiss, and uh, Brent Main is retired, one away. Next Sunday night, we will be at Wrigley Field in Chicago. We won't see Bobby Bonilla. He cracked a rib today in a ball game at Shea Stadium. We will see Ryan Sandberg, the Mets, and the Cubs. Eddie Murray, a big home run today. We'll see Eddie. Eddie Murray and the Mets and the Cubs, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central. That is next Sunday night. Here is Curtis Wilkerson. No, I didn't. That's not Curtis. I can tell. There's <laughs> Curtis. Okay. <laughs> there was the chicken. The chicken is here. Curtis Wilkerson. And there's ball one. Got a big crowd tonight. The chicken. Very popular here in Kansas City, popular everywhere. A signal, no, an inch. Now, they say Welsh uh, doesn't throw a changeup, but it looks like he does, doesn't it? Well, Peter Pascarelli, we were down in the clubhouse, and we tried to get a read on what they call that pitch at Welsh, and they said it's a new wrinkle. <laughs> nice way of putting it. But he can spot the fastball. He's got a fork ball, slider, curve, and is throwing some kind of a changeup. That's what we're going to call it, although he doesn't technically call it that. Two balls, one strike to Wilkerson. Down the right field line. And this is the seventh hit in eight at-bats of this series for Wilkerson. He has a lot of speed, but he'll hold. Canseco playing the carom cleanly. Another double for Kansas City.
Schultz went back to the changeup again, but this time he gets it inside. And for a guy who doesn't have great bat speed, you're really doing him a favor. And Curtis Wilkerson turns on it and rips it off the wall. Welch did a good job of keeping that change up away. The first pitch, and Wilkerson hit that, it would have been a grounder to second. But he got that one inside, and you don't throw a change up inside to a guy who has a fairly slow bat. So Wilkerson not swinging when he saw a new wrinkle. But then he saw something a little more familiar, and he blasted it. That's what we see in the morning when we look in the mirror every day, isn't it? A new wrinkle. Here's Kevin Kozlowski, rookie, left-handed batter. He's hitting 421 since his uh, call-up. Only 19 at-bats, eight hits. Blanchford, very shallow for him over third base. The rest of the infield backed up. Willie Wilson playing over in right center. Kozlowski pretty much a spray hitter. But this pretty much tells you Bob Welch doesn't throw anywhere near as hard as he used to. At one time, you hardly ever played a left-handed batter to pull off Bob Welch. And that curveball is too high. 2-0 to Kozlowski. Brian McRae is on deck. No score last of the second inning. Another kid who earned his spurs signed back in 1984, and this is really his first taste of the major leagues this year. Signed at 17 years old, been in the minor leagues all that time, but finally gets his chance. Had a big three-hit game yesterday. 2-0 to Kozlowski. Base hit in the left center field. And here comes Wilkerson, and Kansas City is on top, one to nothing. Well, the two hottest hitters in the Royals at the bottom of their lineup, Kozlowski and Wilkerson, have delivered, and they got two hot ones at the top of the lineup in Jeffries and Joyner. Kozlowski just takes this fastball the other way. Welch tries to get it on the outer edge, and he spanks it over Weiss's head. So Kozlowski picks up where he left off yesterday. Four hits in his last five times up. Also has pretty good speed. Stole 41 bases one year in the minor leagues. Did Kozlowski as Wilkerson gets himself a drink. One to nothing Royals. Still only one out. And Brian McRae, the hitter. Hitting only 223. A switch hitter batting left-handed. Two homers, 36 battered in. He's stolen 11 bases. Blanchford, very shallow at third for him. Back to the bag safely is Kozlowski. Brian has been primarily a leadoff man the last couple of years for the Royals, although he has a terrible on-base percentage. And finally, his dad, Hal McRae, said he was standing in the shower the other day, and he thought, man, I need to get somebody who can get on base up in front of that lineup. And he quit Craig Jeffries there, and Jeffries has been on fire since. Here's Hal McRae. Hard times earlier this year when the ball club was 1-16. and 16. He'd never seen anything quite like it. Only one team in the history of Major League Baseball has ever had a worse start than that, the Baltimore Orioles in 1988. Right here on Sunday Night Baseball, they were 1-16 in 16 playing the Blue Jays, who had the best record in the majors. And Kansas City beat them 9-0 on Sunday Night Baseball. And they've played over 500 ever since. As Tony Russo would say, that's baseball. <laughs> that's baseball, yeah. Out of play, off to the left, 0-2 the count to Brian McRae. You see what they have done since 1 and 16. Just a, a distant, faded memory now, except the, those games still count. I saw that uh, game, the one game they won, it was against the Oakland A's here. It was a game that the A's virtually handed them. They only got one hit on the night, scored three runs in an inning. They punched their hit that night. <laughs> Strike three call. So two down for Kansas City. A run is in. The shortstop, now David Howard. David Howard. We mentioned Welch can spot the fastball in and out with the best of pitchers. He comes inside. And this one he just buries right at the knees on the inside corner. And Terry Kraft rings, rings up that 85-mile-an-hour fastball. You know who used that line the first time was Eddie Watt, former pitcher with the Baltimore Orioles. He said, hey. Orioles got five runs in an inning on one. He said, we bunch target that. Here is uh, David Howard, the ninth place hitter for the Royals. Howard hitting only 167. Howard had uh, some back problems this spring. And he just wasn't the same player all through the spring and when the season started. And finally, in the midst of that 1-16 stretch, they farmed him out. And 
they've had a problem at shortstop all through the season. It's been a hole they have not been able to fill. It's like contact lens problem for Kevin Kozlowski. See Lynn Jones getting the solution. Either that or he's got dirt in the eye, A or B, but he's going to wash it out right here. Kozlowski getting a chance, not only because he had the three hits yesterday, but Kevin McReynolds, five for his last 44. So Hal McRae giving him a night off against the right-hander Welch. One nothing, Kansas City ahead in the second inning. It's amazing. You look out in this AstroTurf field, it's not very much dirt to get dirt in your eye. Yeah. Very ironic that he got dirt in his eye on this field. There's little uh, patches of dirt around each bag, the mound and home plate, and that is it. There's nobody out there. Willie Wilson, a long run. He got there. Nice play by Willie Wilson. He was way over into left center field and ran it down. Just like old times when he used to patrol that garden for the roll. Here, Oakland is trailing. one nothing as we go to the third inning. Ricky Henderson on the top of the Oakland batting order coming up. Ricky will be followed by Lansford and Canseco. One to nothing, Kansas City out in front. And Dennis Moeller just does catch that outside corner. One ball, one strike. Ricky flight out to left his first time. Ricky Henderson, uh, all of those uh, guys we've mentioned, the Bordicks, the Blankenships, Freddie Fox, I mean, they have done their part to keep the A's in contention right near the top. But La Russa has uh, talked for a number of weeks that now the stretch run is going to be Ricky and Kenseko and those guys are going to have to be back healthy and ready to go for the stretch run. Now strike three call. Ricky got caught looking at a big overhand curveball. Moeller hadn't gotten too many of those over but he really dropped one on him here. Ricky hits out of that crouch. He has a pretty small strike zone, but Terry Kraft says, Ricky, go sit down. So there's one away, and here is Carney Lansford. He pops it up on the first pitch. Right center field, the right, and right. And that is the second out. Carney, who grounded out the third his first time. Two down, nobody on. Huge crowd tonight at Royal Stadium. Kansas City always draws well, whether they're in the race or not. And uh, a tribute to the great fans here. <laughs> Jose Canseco. A uh, Jose Canseco lookalike. <laughs> Two down and nobody on it. Here is the, the real thing, the, uh, the real item. Jose Canseco. He walked his first time. Now, here in Kansas City, this has always been a fierce rivalry for the people here. The Royals and the Athletics. Because, of course, the A's used to be the Kansas City A's. Charlie Finley swept them out of town. People here were very angry about that. And when they get their own ball club and expansion, the A's were immediately the hated rival. And of course, the Royals, one of the, the great early successful uh, expansion teams in their third year of existence, they won over 90 games. And they were in contention with the A's there in the early 70s, many years. You look at the 70s and the 80s, 14 times out of 20 years, the A's, I mean, the Royals finished first or second in the division. This could be trouble. And it's in there. Canseco will have an easy double. Little pop-up, and nobody could get to it. Well, everything is always defensive charts, so and you're not going to play Jose Canseco against a soft-tossing lefty down the right field line. Jim Eisenreich knows he's got to play it on a hop. This one goes out in the old famous Bermuda Triangle. Second baseman, first baseman, and the right field are going, but Jose hit it where they weren't. So that'll bring up Mark McGuire. Two down, Canseco at second. Well, the Royals were the uh, really the model for how to build an expansion franchise. And the Toronto kind of followed the blueprints. They've been a model uh, expansion franchise. And these uh, last couple of years have been two of the, the most trying years the Royals have had since their first couple of seasons. Really, sixth place finishes back to back, but they had a lot of great stability here. Joe Burke, who passed away this year, the team president since its inception. John Sherholtz, the GM, for 22 years until he moved down to Atlanta. But they had a lot of stability at the top, and I think that's a key. Mark McGuire with a count of 2-0. Oh. There's the tribute the Royals wear on their shirt sleeves to 
the late Joe Berg. Very much missed in baseball circles. Very much respected. Now it is 3-0 to McGuire with Steinbach on deck. And you can bet McGuire's got a green light blinking right here. He didn't even look at Rene Latchman. And this is the type of pitcher McGuire eats up. They're well, going to walk. Yeah. Just put him on. But yeah, hey, Steinbach's 12 for his last 20, so we're not exactly <laughs> getting an easy customer. Plus, he's hitting 386 with men in scoring position. So, yeah, maybe not a bad idea once you get behind McGuire, 3 and nothing. But Terry Steinbach has been on fire. Al McRae out to the mound now to visit with his young left-hander. As uh, Steinbach comes up, Steinbach singled, leading off the second inning, and is hitting over 300 now. John, I think a key out right here in the ball game for Dennis Moeller, from the standpoint that he's starting to develop some confidence as he goes along. I mean, you know, you're a left-hander going against this right-handed matching yeah, lineup, a team that has a 100-point higher slugging percentage against left-handers. But the deeper he gets in the game, the more that confidence level is going to rise. He's got a very tough out right here in Terry Steinbach. Let's see what happens. Two men on, two men out. And take over at second base and McGuire over at first base. And here is Steinbach. Oakland trailing 1 0 in the third inning and in need of a clutch hit. Ball one. John, there's that fine line for any youngster coming to the major leagues. If you're a pitcher, the fine line is from going, I think I can win, to I know I can win. And it's situations like this that help you get over the hump or knock you back a little. Play off to the right, one ball, one strike to Jose Canseco, to uh, Terry Steinbach. Canseco, the man he's trying to bring home. One and one the count. Mentioned the base on balls. That was number 70 for Mark McGuire, so he's amongst the leaders. Frank Thomas leads the American League in base on balls, but McGuire with the base on balls and the home runs this year, just having a terrific year. Two and one. Muller hadn't been able to get a strike call with that fastball in. He's been coming in, coming in. A couple of times I thought he had the corner with it, but not that one. That was well inside. But a couple of times earlier I thought he had it. He started to get a little discouraged, I would think, coming in there and not getting the call. And that will go back out of play. Two and two, the count. Minnesota taking three in a row over the weekend from Milwaukee. Well, Oakland has been losing the first two here. And with a loss, Oakland would fall two and a half back of the first place Minnesota Twins. And Oakland is going to Texas next, which is an awfully tough place to go for a pitching staff. Especially Oakland's pitching staff is getting chewed up here before going there. Yeah, I thought they caught a break here, too, because even though it's relatively humid here, we were expecting probably 97 degrees and 95% humidity. So they caught a little bit of a break with the weather here. Ryan McRae in the medium deep left center. And that's it for the Athletics. One hit, two left. They've stranded five. One nothing Kansas City after two and a half. Sunset here in Missouri as we look out to the west from Royal Stadium. And I'm pretty sure in my direction on that one. Sun is setting in the west tonight. At least here. At a boy, John. John Miller along with Dave Campbell. Joe Morgan will be back with us next Sunday night when he gets back from the Hall of Fame. Here is Greg Jeffries. Lined out to center his first time. And the curveball misses. One ball, no strikes. You know, Tim Flannery, the former Padre infielder, is sitting at home going, I hope Campbell doesn't tell that story. But Tim, I am going to tell it when we get a chance. One ball, no strikes, and the curveball is too high. 2-0. Two oh. Tim grew up in California. He and wife Donna used to watch many sunsets. One time they were on a road trip to the East Coast, and he said to Donna, why don't we take a bottle of wine out to the beach in Atlantic City and watch the sunset? 2-0 <laughs> oh the count. And Weiss throws him out. Well, what did she say? Did she say okay? Yeah, they, they finally figured out they had to turn the chairs around, but it took a while. <laughs> One down, nobody on. Here's Wally Joyner. He doubled his first time. Wally one for one. He was in a terrible slump on their just concluded road trip. Wally went five for 30, but now he is uh, five for nine here since they got home. One of the reasons that Hal McRae wanted to move Wally in that number two hole is he's the one left-handed batter who can pull the ball in the Royals club, and they figured if he could get Jeffries on, then he could use that hole on the right side with the first baseman holding the man on. It's really worked in the early going because the two of them we're 10 for 17 the last two games coming into tonight. One ball, one strike to Joyner. George Brett is on deck. 
One to nothing, Kansas City leading last of the third. Toronto won today, beating the Yankees over in the American League East, and Baltimore won at Boston to remain four and a half back. That was the uh, the biggest advantage of any team in any division right now, the majors. Toronto over Baltimore. Minnesota by just two right at the moment over Oakland in the West. And of course, both divisions in the National League very tight. And Joyner is two for two. That'll bring up George Brad with one out and one on. And uh, George Brad, of course, has a rendezvous with destiny. You see uh, both Young and Brett closing in on 3,000. Young still ahead of him. But George has been uh, closing the gap between the two of them very quickly. He's been hitting a lot uh, better lately than has Robin Young. I talked to George in the clubhouse before the game there. I said, George, if you get to 3,000 this year, do you think about, do you think maybe you'll retire? And he said, you know, I might. But he says, I'm going to have to evaluate whether I can still help the team, whether I still think it's fun. But he says, i got to get there first. And then uh, if he gets there, what next? There's speculation in Kansas City that if he gets to 3,000, he might just uh, hang him up. Although George is not saying that. One ball to no strikes to George Brett. There is Joyner over at first. One out. McGuire in the bag with him. Now he's one step closer. 63 away from 3,000. Joyner is stopping at second. So George has always had that great weight transfer. Hands stay back, come forward, hit against that front foot. Don't try to pull the ball. If you try to pull that pitch, it was fading away. It's a ground ball to second base, more than likely a double play ball. He's always been able to utilize the whole field. Charlie Lau was his mentor, and he has become a great, great hitter. He's in the twilight of his career, but he's still far from an automatic out. Well, he's moved back into that number third, uh, number three spot in the batting order lately. And they are 12 and 8 in the 20 games since he went back into the number three spot. You know, for how many years now? 18, 19 years as George Brett goes, so go the Royals. And even though he doesn't have the kind of numbers he used to, still even this year, it's very much that way. John, one of the biggest tributes, uh, not only what a guy does on the field, but Rick Reed was talking the other day, a pitcher just called up from Omaha. And he said, you know, the amazing thing about George Brett is here's a guy who's been around 20 years and somebody comes in, a rookie like me, basically, and he treats me like I've been around 20 years. And he's just tremendously well-respected in the clubhouse. The runners are going. And Eisenreich hits a fly ball to center. Joyner having to hurry back to second as Wilson throws in behind him. Joyner back, and Brett is back to first. John, with the fact that the Royals, and you documented it early, don't have much the power. Catcher, they Brett have been Manning. trying to run like crazy in the series, but Terry Steinbach has gunned out five runners in the first two games. That was a hit and run. Welch being around the plate most of the night, they're doing a lot of first ball hitting. So Hal McRae put the hit and run on, but Eisenreich hit it in the air. Tonight's starting lineup for the Royals, the nine hitters in the lineup have a combined total for the season of 23 home runs. There's a base hit in the right center by Brent Maine. That will get Joyner home. Brett the third, Maine trying for second. Now there's nobody at first base. And he makes it back. Brett back to third. 2 nothing, Kansas City. Kind of interesting there because Mark McGuire actually hustled himself out of the play, and you really can't fault Mark for that. Mark McGuire's job is on a sure double, you go to second base and cover the bag. And McGuire thought that ball was going to get past Conseco, so Mark was hustling down to second, but then he got caught in no man's land. You see Conseco make the play, but all of a sudden you're going to spot McGuire coming into your picture. And whoa, he was into the cutoff position, and nobody there to get him back. So Mark just couldn't get there. So McGuire came into the cutoff position, but back to first base goes Brent Maine. Here's Curtis Wilkerson now. Wilkerson doubled his first time. Runners at first and third, two down. This one right to Canseco to end the inning. But the Royals uh, put together another run. Three hits, two nothing Kansas City after three. <laughs> ESPN Sunday Night Baseball, the game of the week. And 
We've got Kansas City at Royal Stadium leading the Oakland Athletics 2-0 at the end of three full innings. Big crowd on a beautiful night at Royal Stadium. And the big scoreboard, which has been a, uh, a landmark in this ballpark ever since it opened in the early 70s. And, of course, the fountains. Oakland needing to put something together now against young Dennis Moeller. And there's ball one to Randy Reddy. Reddy, Wilson, and Bordick coming up for the athletics here. There's a called strike. One ball, one strike. Now, many times I've seen nine consecutive right-handed hitters in a ball game where a left-hander has started. The 1-1 pitch. Curveball misses. 2-1. But I have a real hard time recalling nine left-handed hitters in a ball game against a right-hander, such as is the case tonight against Bob Welch. Kansas City has nine lefties in a row against him. And Welch is trying to turn the ball over and get him to pull it, but they aren't cooperating. Base hit for Reddy, and he is two for two. Notice that wet outfield when you saw eyes and right field it. Willie Wilson coming up. He made a great catch a couple of innings back on David Howard. The interesting thing about this catch on the AstroTurf going to see how far Willie Wilson actually skids once he hits the ground. I mean, normally if the field were dry, he would last about that long. But watch when he hits this wet turf, all the friction gone. I mean, Willie's on a skateboard right across the outfield. But it's a good thing because if that field were dry out there, he'd have a rotten strawberry on his backside. Willie Wilson. And back to the bag at first is Randy Reddy. Willie used to be a gold glover. He was one of the, uh, the great base dealers of the game before Ricky Henderson uh, ever came along. Still, yeah, still number three percentage-wise behind Eric Davis and Tim Raines. He's at about 85% in the career, 84%. And they might get two here. They do! Almost never happened to Willie Wilson in the old days. Well, it was Taylor made. Curtis Wilkerson gave David Howard a little bit of a Second tough throw to handle, but it looked like David Howard did a little uh, Ozzie Smith routine here. It looks like Curtis throws a little further outside than David would like it. Yeah, that was a good throw. David just throws on the run, a la Ozzie Smith there. He's been watching the Wizard over in St. Louis. Two down, nobody on here is Mike Bordick. Bordick, a right-handed hitter, hit into a force play his first time. Mike Bordick hitting over 300, which is interesting because that's not the way he hit in the minor leagues. He never would have predicted this from what he'd done in the minor leagues. Last year, he hit 272 at Tacoma, and that was the highest batting average he'd ever had in a minor league season. Run to a different stance this year. He's gone to the wide open stance. His reason for it, you see the career numbers in the minor leagues. Mike said, by standing this far open, I get to see the pitch with both eyes. So he's kind of adopted the Jose Canseco type stance. And he talks a lot to Canseco about uh, some of the pitfalls of hitting that way. But he's certainly been successful. That's an open stance, folks. That is a foul ball. Full countdown to Mike Bordick, 3-2. and two. He's out of the University of Maine, up in uh, Orono, Maine. John Winkin, the coach up there. And he's developed some of the ball players, despite all of the, the drawbacks to attracting top-notch ball players up there. Billy Swift went to, to the University of Maine. He went to the College World Series a couple of times when Swift and Bordick were there, and that's pretty tough coming out of the Northeast, playing some of those schools like Southern California and the Arizona schools that play about three times as many games during their season. And ball four to Mike Bordick. So a two down, he draws a walk. Third walk allowed by Moeller. But the Athletics have not yet been able to get through to this rookie, 24-year-old Dennis Moeller, for a run. Now, Walt Weiss comes up. 2-0 Kansas City in the fourth. He's had a pretty good lead on the Royals yesterday, 4-2, but they kept banging into double plays, and they hit into another one tonight. Any threat? Well, Randy Reddy leads off with a single, but Wilson hits into that twin killing. Those can break the back of rallies. And it is ball one to Walt Weiss. Well, the Athletics have uh, grounded into 98 double plays this year, more than any other team. When they don't have Ricky Henderson in their lineup on a regular basis, which they have not this year, they become much more of a kind of a lumbering base-to-base -base kind of a ball club. Uh, you think of the A's, you think of a club that runs well, but primarily because of Ricky, who is on deck. 
Indeed, the one excellent base runner they have is at the plate right now, Walt White. He's not a great base stealer, but he has tremendous instincts on the base pass. This guy has the total package when his legs are healthy, but that's been a big yip the last two years. Mm, pretty good move. First time he's showing that. <laughs> Mike Bordick almost got hung out to dry. He wasn't even going anywhere. Well, those crafty left-handers always seem to be the ones that have the excellent move. I tell you, that's borderline balk. You're supposed to step on a 45-degree angle, and he isn't stepping at any 45 degrees. I got news for you. Dave McKay, the first base coach, is staring right down the barrel, hadn't said anything, but that's awfully close to a block. Bordick's almost been hung out twice. Bordick has stolen eight bases for the year. And it is two and one now to Walt Weiss. Weiss flight out to right center his first time. La Russa, I think he agrees with you, Dave, about that. Uh, I think he's a little beyond that. He thinks it was a ball. Right to Wilkerson, and that ends the inning. So Ricky will lead off the next inning. Two to nothing, Kansas City after three and a half. Dave Henderson of the Oakland Athletics. He was an all-star last year, hit 25 home runs, but he's only played three games all this year with a hamstring problem, now a, a calf problem. And tomorrow when they get to Texas on a grass field, he's going to test it. And if everything goes well, then he is hopeful that they'll be able to activate him shortly. Here's Kozlowski leading it off. He drove in the first uh, Kansas City run with a single. In the second, he is one for one. Two nothing, Kansas City ahead. Last of the fourth. Last year at the All-Star Game, the Toronto fans were booing all the Oakland A's players except Dave Henderson. Dave came out and he leaned over to Jose Canseco and says, they don't boo the Hindu. <laughs> He's a very popular player, though. He has a lot of fun, and I think fans recognize that he just, he really interacts with the fans. He smiles. He's, he's just very energetic, and I think the fans react to that around baseball. 2-0 the count to Kevin Kozlowski, hitting 450 right now in his very young big league career. thrown out by Bordick. One away. Tomorrow night, 8.30, Monday Night Baseball. These same Oakland Athletics, Mark McGuire and company, and you get two of the top home run hitters in the majors. McGuire's got 32, and then Juan Gonzalez, who's got 26 home runs. That's tomorrow night. Mike Moore against Jose Guzman tomorrow night on the Monday Night Baseball. Here is Brian McRae. He was called out on strikes his first time. And he takes ball one. A switch hitter batting left-handed. Kansas City with six left-handed hitters and three switch hitters on the roster. All in there tonight, making nine lefties in a row in the order against Bob Welch. One ball, no strikes. One out, nobody on. And there's that pitch that's not a changeup. Right. Not a changeup, not a fork ball. Let's see. Uh... Let's see. It's not a batting practice fastball. It's just oh, a new wrinkle. Kind of a new wrinkle. Okay. That's the curve. Two and on the count to Brian McRae. Kansas City got a run in the second inning, driven in by Kozlowski, and a run in the third inning, driven in by Maine. Lansford, very shallow at third for McRae. That ball is out of play off to the left. Two and two. That's the location Bob wants for that off-speed wrinkle or whatever he calls it. Down and away because the best thing you're going to do is maybe soft serve one to left field, but more than likely you're going to hit the ground ball to second. It's when he got it inside to Curtis, Curtis, Curtis Wilkerson that he got in trouble a couple of innings back. Two and two the count. One out, nobody on. And Bordick throws out Brian McRae. Two men gone here in the fourth inning. Mike Bordick looks just as home at second base as he does shortstop. And let's not forget about the contribution that Lance Blankenship had with his club early on. He was playing second base and played great. So the Oakland A story has really been a team effort all year. David Howard, the shortstop up now. Two to nothing, the Royals out in front. Last of the fourth. There's the curveball, but too high. Bob Welch in his 15th start of the year, and he has uh, pitched uh, pretty well lately. He has won five of his last six decisions, dating back to 
June 25th. Started the year on the disabled list. He never pitched at all until May the 2nd and then went back on the disabled list for a second time. Knee, shoulder, back. Had a little bit of everything. But 6 and 2, 3.24 since back. So, Bobby Welch, a consummate pro, is not the power pitcher he once was. And there's a, a, a fastball. The current Welch fastball, 2 and 1 the count. Back to back sons of major leaguers hitting in the Royals lineup. Of course, Brian McRae, the son of Hal, and David Howard's father, Bruce, pitched in the White Sox organization. In fact, he pitched with the White Sox 1963 through 67. Two balls, two strikes to Howard. Greg Jeffries would be next. Very beautiful night here in Kansas City. Almost no wind blowing at all now. The flags are hanging limply. Shirt sleeve weather. Just off the outside, three and two. Well, still spotting in and out. The problems he's had is when he's been up, and you're right, no breeze. Three and two, and a walk. And so we'll go to the top of the order for Greg Jeffries. Greg Jeffries, they used to say awful things about this guy in New York. Usually behind his back, he was uh, the most unpopular of players with the New York Mets, it seemed. And he was uh, awfully unhappy as a player there. But even since the trade, uh, players with the Mets uh, still have criticized him in Sports Illustrated. But look at Jeffries of the Royals. Got 49 RBIs. Hitting 294. McReynolds, 47 RBIs. And Keith Miller, who was actually the leadoff man, when he's back, Jeffries will probably move back to the number two spot in the order. And Miller's done real well as a leadoff man. He's been hurt a couple of times. And the Brett Saberhagen went down. Uh, they're hopeful he won't have to go into the disabled list. He had to leave the ball game early last night against the Cubs. A finger problem. Jeffries has a base hit to right field. Howard will stop at second base as Canseco gets Weiss the cutoff man. And Jeffries is one for three. Well, when Jeffries walked to the plate, they were playing the theme from the Adams family. Greg's nickname is Pugsley after the chubby little kid. That's what the Royals have dubbed him. And he hits the first pitch in the right field for a solid single. Seven hits now for Kansas City against Bob Welch. Now, Wally Joyner, the hitter. Welch has not been able to get Joyner out. Joyner has doubled and he has singled. Two for two. They said here can be another run for Kansas City there. They're not hitting the ball all around the ballpark. They're just getting their little base hits here and there. And they put two runs on the board. On that uh, little change up. You got Joyner out of the front foot and Reddy takes it to him right side of the side. Ricky Henderson leads off when we come back. The moment, August 17, 1980. Kansas City Royals' George Brett had a four for four day to push his batting average past the 400 mark. Playing through nagging injuries much of the season, Brett ended the year with a 390 batting average, the highest since Ted Williams' 406 in 41. He won the American League's Most Valuable Player Award. George Brett, so many milestones along the way and such a great career, now closing in on 3,000 hits. Ricky Henderson coming up. He struck out looking his last time against Dennis Moeller. 2-0 Kansas City ahead as we go to the fifth. We've done a good job. We haven't called him Joe yet. <laughs> Joe Molder. Temptation from the second generation, but he's really not the son of Joe. His dad did play. Fred played in the Cardinal organization, but the tendency is always there. Joe Molder, a right-hander with the Dodgers back in the uh, early to mid-60s. Ricky Henderson has fly to left, and he has struck out looking. When you keep Ricky Henderson off base, you go a long way towards shutting down the athletics. Ricky's 0 for 13 since coming back off the day injury, the six days off with a hamstring. He was hit by a pitch twice yesterday, but when Ricky's not on, 
A's offense sputters a little bit. Now Carney Lance for the hitter. He is grounded a third and he is flied out to shallow right center. So each of the first two hitters have not been able to get on base for Kenseko or McGuire. 2 0 Kansas City in the fifth. And a ball two. Sparky Anderson sure has some nice things to say about Carney Lansford lately. He says this guy's kind of like a coal miner. He just shows up, goes to work every day. Nothing glamorous about him, but he is solid. He's there when you need it. Wilkerson and Lansford retired. So Carney's 0 for 3. And not, not often when you get uh, complimented by uh, somebody who likens you to a coal miner. <laughs> well, I think it was the work ethic that Sparky was talking about. I hope so. Sparky also said that Tony La Russa is the best young manager in baseball in his 23 years. And he says, you know, he says the Oakland A's have got no business being in this race this year. And you really have to give it to Tony La Russa. We take a look at Jose Canseco. His bat's been quiet since he's been coming back off the injured problem, injury problem as well. Juan Berenguer warming up in the Kansas City bullpen. As Canseco takes ball one. Canseco has walked and he has doubled. A little bloop double. The real oddities, uh, the use of the disabled list. Canseco played for six days, hurt, with the agreement that after the six days he would then go on the disabled list to get his shoulder well. And the night before he went on the disabled list, knowing that he was going on the next day, he hit a home run. Back and there. he hasn't uh, hasn't done much of that since. Now, in fact, I think he hit around four or five in that period leading up to the spot he was going to go on the DL. A's were facing something like five left-handers out of seven days, and after those left-handers three, he went on the DL just before the All-Star Five out of the five out of the six games after he made the agreement with Larusa, Tony just said, "Hey, stay with us for those six, and then we'll we'll get you healed up." And of course. Part of the process came during the All-Star break, so he didn't have to miss 15 games. One on the DL. Three and two to Canseco. Meanwhile, you know, young Dennis Moeller just really mowing down the A's. He faced a critical situation in the third with runners at first and second, but retired Terry Steinbach, who had 12 hits in his last 20 times up. That was his key out in the game to this point, but he got a double play ball. He's just been kind of rolling along. A struck him out. Got him chasing ball four. So the athletics are retired. George Brett will lead it off when we come back. 2 nothing Royals. 2 nothing Royals. Canseco down on strikes to end the fifth. Pretty good pitching pattern by Moeller. He gets a fastball in. Gets the call from Terry Kraft. Goes fastball away. That's a slider, quick slider, and then gets the fastball away that Canseco, you see, turned it over a little bit, maybe took a little off. Good pitching. Youngster gets his second strikeout and his developing confidence as he goes along here. Now George Brett. He is one for two tonight. 63 hits away from 3,000. Ball one from Bob Welch. George Brett. Lately, he has not been hitting for power whatsoever. In his last 28 hits, only two have been for extra bases. And there's 29, 27 singles, 62 away from 3,000. Now, the thing George Brett does, in addition to being a great hitter, here he is approaching 40 years old. Watch how hard he runs the first base. He runs everything out like it's going to be a double. He puts pressure on the defense. You see some guys, they get the single to right center field. They go into the old Ole. George sees the ball picked up by Willie Wilson and he gets it back in. But he has been an aggressive player his entire career. Part of that has hurt him, though. He's been on the disabled list well over 10 times in his career. He'd easily get 3,000 hits without that. But he's an aggressive player. Now, Jim Eisenreich, the hitter, and he takes the ball outside from Bob Welch. The last of the fifth inning, two nothing Royals. Don't be surprised if McRae goes back to the hit and run. Generally, you don't do that in the cleanup position, but Eisenreich is not your prototype cleanup hitter either. The Oakland bullpen is getting busy now. Welch has given up eight hits in this game. Bob, 
Bob Welch does a pretty good job of holding runners. He's also, as we look at Kevin Campbell in the bullpen, he's the active leader in box. Bob Welch. And Brett back again. It's amazing. The three top pitchers active in box. Bob Welch, Rick Sutcliffe, and Charlie Huff. They all played for the Dodgers at one time. There was a guy named Don Drysdale that had a pretty good block who, who used to work as an instructor there part of the time. What a coincidence. Hmm. Pitch out, but nothing was happening there. Of course, uh, anybody who's going to be among the active block leaders would also have to have been around for a long, long time. I'd be a little more impressed if Welch was maybe in his fourth year. Good point. 42 bucks though for Bob Welch. Tony La Russa controls the running game, the manager of the Oakland A's, and he thought he saw something in George Brett's movements when he had Welch step off the rubber. He thought Brett was going. Strike two and one the count now. Larissa said he learned how to control the running game from Gene Mott. Larissa also said he came to the American League at a great time. Guys like Will Weaver and Sparky Anderson and Billy Martin. He said he learned so much from each of them. But Gene Mott is a guy that taught him to control the running game. Study runners. Most of them will tip off when they're going to go. Larissa thought Brett had shown something. That's why he ordered the pitch out by Steinbeck. Two and one the count to Eisenreich. Is back again. One of those obscure statistics a couple of years ago, the A's had the most success of any team in baseball at throwing out runners on pitch outs. The most, but ironically, it was only 8.3%. So you don't get them very often on pitch outs. Shallow left field. Ready. No, oh, that's not the way they teach it. Ready got it, though, and that is the first out. Brett back to first. Let's go to Chris Myers. All right, John, bottom of the seventh at San Francisco. The Braves took game one, leading in game two. Kevin Bass off ex-Royal Mark Davis, a solo homer. Bass is second homer of the game, seventh of the year, but the Braves still have the lead, and you can catch the Braves and Reds on ESPN's Wednesday Night Baseball. Don't miss it. Top two teams in the National League. I would not be surprised, Dave, that that... Uh, Division is not decided until the, the final day or the final weekend. The Braves and the Reds, they got eight games against each other the rest of the way. Five in Atlanta and three in Cincinnati. And the Braves have not won in Cincinnati. They're 0-6 this year. But this, this matchup will be at Fulton County Stadium down in Atlanta this week. Both teams, excellent starting pitchers. They've got some speed. The, uh, the Reds probably have the advantage in the bullpen. The Braves more power. The Reds with an excellent defense. The Braves with a strong defense. And they were both so hot there for about, what, five, six weeks. Uh, the Braves had a stretch. They went 37 and 10. All into the count to Brent Main. He delivered a run with a two-out single in the third. A couple of RBI singles for the Royals. Has them ahead here. 2 nothing. Last of the fifth. One out. George Brett over at first base. George has stolen five bases this year. There's a called strike on the outside. And Brent Main is finished second strikeout for bob welch now, Br brent's talking to terry Kraft, but i think terry said now wait a minute when you're catching you want that pitch so it's the same strike zone when you're hitting super slow you see welch just turns it over a little bit steinbach set up maybe a little bit off the corner you see terry's a little off the corner but welch hits the glove almost perfectly that's a real borderline pitch but you can't really make a case that it wasn't a strike. I mean, it was splitting here. So that's a great pitch by Bob Welch on 0 2. Curtis Wilkerson, the hitter. He is doubled, scored a run, fly down. And he takes a strike on the outside. The only difference between Bob Welch now and maybe five, six years ago, or even when he was in his the year 1990 when he won 27, he could get away with fastballs in the middle of the plate. He can't do it anymore. Every pitch that's been in the middle of the plate tonight has been hit hard somewhere. But he still has enough guile about him to make those real good pitches. Two down, Brett at first. Two to nothing, Kansas City out front. We're in the last of the fifth inning. 79 and 41 since he came over to the Oakland A's. Not too shabby, including that 27 and 6 Cy Young Award here in 1990. That's a foul out of play off to the left. On to the count to uh, Curtis Wilkerson. Uh, Tony LaRusso, in the little interview we did with him before the game, said that the key for the Athletics, if they're going to win the title, is the, the pitching, the starting pitching. It's going to have to come around. 
Well, it really is. Right now, he doesn't really have anybody in that group of five that he can count on a given night to give him eight innings. And before, Tony's always had that luxury. Either Welch or Stewart or Mike Moore would give him the eight. That way, he could set up his bullpen for the days before those guys fish and the days after. But right now, nobody's giving him that consistent seven and eight innings. One and two the count. Well, especially uh, Stewart. I always thought it was underappreciated the fact that the four years where he won the, the 20 games, he also was always among the league leaders or led the league in innings pitch. Complete game. In the right center field. Base hit. Willie Wilson cuts it off. And Brett will go to third. Wilkerson is two for three. Wilkerson has turned into an all-star this weekend. Well, we talked about the location on Bob Welch. If he gets it down here, he's in good shape. If he gets it up here, he's getting hammered. We'll see where the pitch is. Up in the strike zone. Curtis Wilkerson, nine hits in the last three games, and every time Bob has gotten a pitch up in the strike zone, elevated the ball for the hitter, they've made him pay. George Brent over at third base, and Curtis Wilkerson is over at first base. Two down in the fifth inning. Royals are like a bunch of gnats. They just peck you to death. They aren't going to overswing. Not a lot of great power in the lineup, but you make a mistake up, they're just going to slap it in one of the gaps in the outfield. Kevin Kozlowski, he drove in the first Kansas City run with a single in the second inning. There goes Wilkerson. Steinbach will not throw. Hayes didn't even have anybody on the cover, and that's a prearranged signal there. Steinbach gives a signal. Neither Weiss nor Bordick was on the cover, so the A's had just made up their mind they weren't going to throw through. So Wilkerson with his 11th steal of the year. And the count is 0-1 to Kevin Kozlowski. So now base hit can mean two runs. Brian McCray on deck. Blanchard very shallow over at third. The rest of the infield backed up. And he's fouled on the left field line. Now we talked about that key out that Moeller got in the third inning, getting Steinbach with two men on base. This is a very key out for Bob Welch. To keep his club in this ballgame, they trail by two. He's got to get Kozlowski here. A big hit here driving in two would really put the A's behind the eight ball. So Bob Welch struggling. He has allowed nine hits in four and two-thirds innings, including two here. Kansas City has left six men on base in the first four innings. So he has had trouble in every inning of the game. They've had somebody in scoring position in every inning of this game. That's a ball. One and two to Kozlowski. Guessing game begins. Well, to head 0-2, he went away. Let's see if that was to set up a fastball in, maybe. Kozlowski has shown that he can go the other way. This is the pitch where Welch wants something good to happen. We check out Steinbach's signal for the man on second. We won't really pick it up unless we can steal it. And, uh, and fastball curve somewhere under the side. We'll find out what it is. On the inside corner, strike three call. Well, we said he might go back with the fastball in. He set him up with a fastball away. Great pitch in a clutch situation by Bob Welch. McGuire, Steinbach and Reddy, 2 0 Oakland trailing. <laughs> Royals ahead, too, and the reason they're only ahead by two was a great pitch by Bob Welch. He had set it up with a fastball away. We mentioned he might come back inside, but not only did he come inside with a great pitch, he reached back and threw it 88 miles an hour, which matches his best fastball of the night. That's a guy who knows when to reach back, and Bobby Welch keeps his club in, and Juan Berenguer is a new pitcher for the Royals. Juan Berenguer, 37 years of age, acquired recently from the Atlanta Braves. Mark Davis went to Atlanta, and here's Mark McGuire to start it off against him, and there is ball one. Now, Dennis Moeller is working some magic against the Athletics. He went five innings, no runs, four hits, and they pulled him out of there. Certainly get a different look here, and on that fastball, base hit down the left field line. And McGuire will hold with a single. Moeller throwing stuff up there around 82-83. Baron Gear's first pitch was 94. And uh, Dave, your analysis as to why he would make this move when the lefty was uh, doing so well. Well, we never know what's going on in the dugout. Maybe he thought the youngster got enough work tonight, wants to go against this right-handed lineup with Juan Berenguer. But the A's are a great fastball-hitting team. Sometimes the off-speed pitchers can give them trouble, and Moeller really had him handcuffed. Now here is Steinbach. McGuire, one for two with a walk. Steinbach is one for two. That fastball on the hands, fouled away off to the right. 
2 0. Kansas City ahead. We're in the sixth inning. During this streak where Steinbach is 12 for his last 21, he's really waited on the ball well and hit it to the opposite field a lot. By keeping his hands back, he's utilized the whole field. You see, he was a little bit late on that swing. Baron Garrett, he's got to adjust to that fastball of Baron Garrett. On one the count. to the count. Dennis Moeller, the 24-year-old left-hander, has a chance to win this one in his second Major League start. He threw 78 pitches. And you see there, no runs. He walked three, struck out two. And got out of a, tough, a couple little jams. That's pretty good pitches when he had to. One of the things you always try to do with a young pitcher, Hal McRae knows, is try to build their confidence. Sometimes a small victory like Moeller going through five innings, only allowing five hits, really is going to boost his confidence for the next time around. Baron Gear's only been with uh, Kansas City since July 21st. That's when the trade was made. And has been in four ball games here. Remember, of course, the bad blood yesterday, but nothing wrong with that pitch. 0 and 2, get him off the plate. That's just good baseball. 1 and 2 the count. This could be 2. Jeffries the second one. Wilkerson will hold on to it. And Jeffries had a little trouble with that one. Let's go now to Chris Myers. All right, it's raining in Arlington, also lightning. The Rangers and the Angels, bottom of the fifth. Uh, the Rangers strike quickly. Langston tries to pick off Dickie Thon at second. It gets away. Chad Curtis grabs it in center. Thon, well, he tries to grab it. <laughs> Thon is all the way around and in. It's two to nothing. Kevin Brown has that lead. Let's go back to John. All right, Chris. Oakland with one out and one on at the top of the sixth inning, trailing two nothing. Still playing a little good hardball here. Watch McGuire come in. Good clean slide at this point, though, going all the way across to <laughs> make sure Curtis Wilkerson. That's just good baseball. Again, though, Greg Jeffries double clutched. He backed up on a play, and Greg Jeffries is an excellent hitter, and maybe someday he may become a decent infielder, but right now he still struggles defensively. He fights the ball too much. He certainly was hit sharply enough to have been a double play. Harold Baines, the uh, veteran left-handed hitter, off the bench to pinch hit for Randy Reddy. Just off the outside, ball one. Harold Baines for the year, hitting 260, eight homers, and 48 runs battered in. He's off to one of his worst starts ever this year, so he's gotten the bat going the last couple of months. And he's hitting 444 lifetime against Baron Gare. Ball two. That's the good news. The bad news is at Royal Stadium this year, Harold Baines is one for 22, so he has not found his part to his liking. Good news, bad news. Let's see how it comes out. So he got to be ecstatic that they finally got some pitcher that he can hit. <laughs> Steinbach to at first. Join around the back with him. That is a call strike. Two and one to Harold Baines. Baron Garrett looks like Nolan Ryan tonight after watching Dennis Moeller. I mean, that fastball looks explosive. And maybe that's uh, what McCray had in mind, a completely different style of pitching, and maybe turn that lineup around a little bit. Three and one the count now to Harold Baines. Well, the San Francisco Giants felt for them to have any kind of chance of getting back in the race, they would have to sweep that five-game series against Atlanta. They won the first two games, but Atlanta took the next three, including the doubleheader today. That's a base hit down the right field line. Rounding second is Steinbach. He'll go to third. And Oakland has runners at first and third with one out as Harold Baines comes off the bench and rips a single down the right field line. You know, Harold Baines likes the ball up. Not many left-handed hitters do, but this ball is up in the strike zone, and he really turns and hammers on it. Crunch. By up, I mean belt high, and Baines turns, gets it into the corner. Eisenreich makes a nice play to keep holding to a single. So the A's biggest threat of the evening right here. Now, we mentioned that uh, Baines had had success with Baron Gear in the past. Here's Willie Wilson, who has a 474 batting average lifetime against Baron Gear. Foul right past Dave McKay, the first base coach. Of course, anytime you see Willie Wilson hit a ground ball down the first baseline, you think about he is the active leader in inside the park home runs with 13, and he hit most of them in this park. This park has a lot of funny caroms down the line, and boy, if that ball just gets past an outfielder with Willie Wilson's speed, you can touch them all. 
In those days, 10, 12 years ago, Wilson would go around the bases here, and you would swear he never even touched the ground. <laughs> and it is out of play. 0 2. He was a tremendous weapon for the Royals. Anything he hit on the ground was liable to be a base hit. He was so fast. There is Rusty Meacham up in the Kansas City bullpen. Well, he worked a lot here Friday night. Worked three innings, gave up a home run to McGuire, but then hung around long enough to get the win in ten innings. Oh, and two to Wilson. And that is a base hit past the diving joiner. Oakland has its first run of the game. Steinbach scores, Baines the second. And the best laid plans of Hal McCray and the Royals here are crumbling down around them. Uh, one of the reasons left-handed hitters have always had the advantage when that first baseman holds a runner on, they have extra room to hit through. You can see with Wally Joyner creeping off the bag, he just barely misses this. If you're not holding a runner on, this is a routine out. But that's one of the reasons left-handed batters will generally hit higher than right-handers. You get that extra hole to hit through on the right side of the diamond. So now it is two to one, and a base hit could tie the game. Mike Bordick is coming up. The possible tying run is Harold Baines over at second. He's not a fast runner. Had real bad knees. Slowed him down considerably. And a breaking ball for a call strike. Well, he took Mauler out of there. Mauler with a shutout going. He'd had his easiest inning yet in the fifth inning. He'd had base runners in every other inning. And yet he pulled him out of there. And it hasn't worked out so far. That's why they make the big money, those managers. So the press can come in and put them on the grill after the game. And there's a called strike. Oh, and two the count to boarding. Well, Hal, earlier in the season, I asked him when his club was about 0 and 9. I said, How are you holding up? He said, Well, he said, if the lead cowboy sits funny on the horse, you're not going to have much success. So he says, Got to keep the uh, ship steered right. It keeps a positive attitude, even in the face of a pretty tough year. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he used a Wild West illusion and then a nautical illusion. Uh -huh. the same. Uh, Wow. Well, hell knows those cliches. Yeah. Yeah. When, you, when you're around baseball, you learn the cliches. Good day for two, uh, take them one at a time. I mean, goodness. Be like uh, John Wayne as captain of the Queen Mary or something. <laughs> well, Duke Watson managed here before. The Duke and his son Dusty. And he takes that slider off the outside. Does boarding two and two the count. Two on, one out, one in. Two to one. Kansas City ahead with the lead is... Uh, seriously being threatened here. Aaron Gear had an earned run average of over five while he was with Atlanta. He wasn't uh, hitting a lot of people out there. That's a foul out of play. Still two and two. Well, Bordick's had good numbers this year with men in scoring position. 303, so in addition to his 300 plus average, it really has done a fine job, and the funny thing about it, Tony La Russa still, in certain situations, will pinch hit for him. And this kid is the leading hitter on the club. Hey, nine days ago in Oakland, dramatic ninth inning, the club trailing five to four, and he had a two-run double off the top of the left field wall against none other than Tom Hankey to win the game in the clutch. That slider misses badly. Well, again, the guys have been getting the big hits. I mean, Bordy gets that one. You go to the Metrodome. Randy Reddy hits the grand slam to ice the game. Eric Fox beats Rick Aguilera with a, with a three-run homer in the ninth inning. Mark McGuire had a ball game where he knocked in five with a couple of home runs, but it's been everybody throughout the lineup. It hadn't just been the guys you would expect. Walt Weiss on deck. Baines at second, Wilson at first, one out. The 3-2 pitch. There they go. And it is ball four, and the bases are loaded. Baron Gare has faced five hitters, and four of them have reached base against him. Now we think back to that pitch Bob Welch made in the bottom of the fifth inning. We said to keep his club in the game and to keep them focused and keep them feeling good about themselves, he needed to get Kozlowski out, and he made a great pitch. Now all of a sudden, the A's are looking at an opportunity to take the lead if Walt Weiss can do something here. Baines at third base, the possible tying run. Wilson at second, the possible go-ahead run. And there is Mike Bordick over at first base. Walt Weiss, three for eight, the few times he's faced Baron Gare. Weiss is 0 for two tonight. Very high, ball one. And it gets worse as Baron Gare goes along here. Now, keep in mind, as the guy Hanson, the pitching coach, heads out to the mound now, that McCray's options are somewhat limited because yesterday, 
he had to use his bullpen for eight innings as the starting pitcher was ejected and then the first reliever also was ejected in the second inning of that game and of course they had their real tough ball game here Friday night where both teams went through their bullpens really Pichardo gets kicked out by the home plate umpire Jim Joyce Steve Shiflett comes in he gets booted in the second inning Mike McNanty came in did a pretty good job but you're right Al McRae has been deep in the pen it's going to be tough there's Pichardo he got chased for after hitting Ricky Henderson he knocked down Randy Reddy a couple of times and he got the heave home bases loaded one out and that's a strike on the outside and one of those uh, borderline strikes one ball one strike well Friday night Kansas City's bullpen pitched five innings eight innings yesterday that's a lot of that's quite a load for any bullpen they need Baron Gare to give them two three innings tonight the slider is too high and everything is too high right now two and one now before the game McCray said he thought he would be in good shape tonight he said because Baron Gare can give us three and we've got you know Montgomery to close the ace closer but Baron Gare does not look like he's able to give him three so far two and one the count very high ball three Ricky Henderson is on deck and there's nowhere to put Weiss the bases are loaded well, I got a bet in this situation that Walt Weiss is going to get a take sign he looks down at third base coach Renee Latchman but the way Baron Gare is all over the place I think LaRusso is going to try to make him throw two strikes here we'll see and it's a base hit to right field here comes Baines with a tying run and here comes Wilson with a go ahead run over to third base goes Bordick and it is three to two Oakland and the fans in Kansas City are very unhappy that will do it for Baron Gare as Hal McRae heads to the mound that's so much for the take sign till in gave him the green light he knocks in a pair of runs and the Oakland A's have battled back to grab the lead Weiss got a pitch right in the hammer zone and Walt hitting only 125 this year with men in scoring position ups those numbers as he got a cripple pitch and pounded on it and uh, hey that's why Tony La Russa Sparky thinks he's one of the best managers he's seen not uh, much of a night for Juan Berenguer and uh, they were hoping for better not only tonight but when they picked him up from Atlanta three to two Oakland the game turning dramatically with the pitching change and out of skinny right-handed Rusty Meacham throws a strike to Ricky Henderson and Meacham has uh, pitched extremely well for the Kansas City Royals a little bit on the eccentric side so people say he reminds you of Mark the Bird Fidrich he'll get fidgety out on the mound do a few things fastball curveball slider fortball and they say he throws from three different arm positions which gives him about 12 pitches but he's been very effective only 24 years of age six feet two inches tall listed at 165 looks less than that he inherits Bordick at third base and Weiss at first base still only one out in the inning and three runs in just off the outside of Ricky one and two Meacham this year five and three with a 1.89 ERA and in 66 and two thirds innings he's allowed only 52 hits and only 10 walks the combination of the hits and walks a lot less than his innings pitched very tough Guy Hansen had an interesting observation some people were kidding him about his skinny build and he says hey don't you lift weights he says the reason you can throw from so many different arm positions is because you're so flexible in your upper body I don't want you to get both it's that uh, Ichabod Crane look about it two and two the count what was it that the late Bob Prince once said about uh, I said, right. it's Kent to call Kent to call. It looked like a tree full of owls. <laughs> <laughs> two and two, the count to Ricky. Three and two. And this guy, besides uh, throwing from all those different positions, pitch before last, we had clocked at 92 miles an hour. He kind of came out of nowhere, too. He pitched for Detroit last year with a 5.2 earned run average. There's a high drive with Weiss going deep into center. McCray is under it. Tagging at third is Bordick. And here comes Bordick with run number four. Also tagging. And into second base is Weiss. He was running on the pitch and had time to go back and tag up and head back to second again. One of the things that people don't understand is just because a guy isn't a great base dealer, he can be a great base runner. Walt Weiss on the move, spotted that ball, all of a sudden put on the brakes, dashed back to first, and still was able to tag up and go to second. You have to have great instincts to do that. 
And Walt Weiss is one of the best instinctive runners in the game. Another guy over in Milwaukee, Paul Molitor, isn't always going to steal 50 bases, but he's a great base runner. Now Carney Lansford, the hitter, he fouls one off to the right. Owen won the count. Four to two, the Athletics. Four runs have scored in the inning. All of them charged to Juan Berenguer, and the runner at second, Weiss, also belongs to him. Carney, 0 for 3, as is Ricky Henderson, but Ricky now at least has an RBI. If Carney can get a base hit, he'll get one, too. Four runs and eight hits for the Athletics. Even though starter Dennis Moeller went five innings and no runs, four hits allowed. He's out of there, and the Athletics are in there right now. Carney drives one, deep to left field. This one is way back there, and go on a home run! Carney Lansford with his third home run of the year. And uh, Carney, with his 42nd and 43rd, runs battered in. And it is a six-run inning for the Athletics, a bona fide big inning. They have really exploded. And the other thing they have going for them tonight, Dennis Eckersley is working on three complete days rest. So they're in pretty good shape right now after this explosion. Johnny Lancer doesn't hit many, but he hits one in one of the toughest parks in baseball to hit it in, but he got it down near the line. So Carney Lansford takes Rusty Meacham out. Two home runs Meacham's given up in the series, something he hasn't done very much of this year. Yeah, he went to the three and a third on Friday, but the reason he had to go that far was because he gave up the game-tying homer to McGuire in the seventh inning soon after he entered the game. And there's ball one to Jose Canseco. He is the ninth man to bat in this inning. Six runs have scored for the Athletics. 2-0. And the other thing this will allow is probably Tony La Russa can put Eric Fox in left field now with a four-run lead. If the game would have been tied, he might have been tempted to leave Harold Baines in, who pinch hit for Randy Reddy. But now he can go with the defensive platoon, and Baines won't have to go out there with his bad knees. 3-0 to Canseco. Canseco has hit into a force play. He's been walked intentionally, and he is single. Or, I, I beg your pardon, he's walked doubled and struck out. 3-1 now. Bullpen activity for the Kansas City again. There is a Shiflet, rookie right-hander, who was ejected from the game yesterday. Jeffries throws out Canseco as he uh, trotted up the first baseline. Six runs for Oakland, six to two they lead. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball is brought to you by Cold Filter Genuine Draft Light. There's nothing typical about it. John Miller with Dave Campbell from Royal Stadium, Kansas City. This game has uh, taken a sudden and uh, very dramatic turn. It was all Kansas City for five. Bob Welch was on the verge of extinction there in the fifth inning. And now Oakland is making defensive changes. Just one inning later, Eric Fox has gone into play left field after Baines was used as a hitter for Reddy. Bob Welch, when last he saw him, was a base hit away from being four runs down and maybe pulled out of the game. Now he has a four-run lead. Very much still in there. Nobody's covering first. McGuire started over after that bunt, and so did Bordick, the second baseman. And then nobody went to first base. Base hit for Brian McRae. Then McGuire got trapped in no man's land. But Bob Welch actually makes a very easy play out of this, but McGuire didn't read it very well off the bat. And you can see Mark going to that spot going, oh, goodness. So. Brian McRae with a bad bunt, but ends up beating it out for a hit. The A's didn't read it very well. Now, when you've got a good size lead, and you're the manager, you hate when things like that happen. Oh, absolutely. Again, he just wants Welsh to get through another inning, maybe go to somebody else like Jeff Parrott to set it up for Eckersley, but you don't want to let the Royals come back here in the sixth inning before you can get to the big man. And you want to make all the routine plays. Don't do anything fancy. Don't take chances. Stay out of the big inning. And that should have been a, a routine play. Indeed. Again, you know, from our angle, it was very easy. From Mark McGuire's angle, having played first base, uh, you know, the, the first baseman is taught to go for balls. The pitcher, Welch, actually is supposed to field the ball and keep going to first base, although I don't know if he would have beaten McRae on that one anyway. But neither one of them made a... I mean, McGuire did not make a great play on it. It's Kansas City with 10 hits now against Bob Welch, and there is Jeff Parrott, setup man for Eckersley. And he is up in the bullpen. David Howard, the hitter, one ball and no strikes. Howard has lined out and walked. Shallow center, but Willie is there for the out. Back 
back in the sixth inning with open back. Very early on in the inning, there was something rather subtle that happened that could have turned that inning around, Dave. We talk about making the routine plays, and Jeffries backs up on this ball instead of charging it. It costs his team a double play. You got two outs, nobody on. Chances are the Oakland A's aren't going to ring up six runs on you, but Jeffries backed up on that ball instead of charging it. He gave Wilkerson a throw that was off the backside of the bag. You give the Oakland A's four outs in an inning, and they're usually going to pound on you, and they've really made them pay. Here is Jeffries. He's lined to center, grounded a short and single. And McCray is back. Indeed, McGuire had started the inning with a single, and then Steinbach hit one sharply to Jeffries that you thought had a chance to be a double play. But they didn't get it. And then later, Oakland got them. Six runs scored. They strike to Jeffries. He's one for three, and his batting average is at 295 right at the moment. Well, I know the Royals right now think he's much too young to even be thinking about that DH ball. I mean, this kid is a quality hitter. He's a gap hitter. He's perfect for this ballpark. But no matter where the Mets seem to try to play him defensively, he just struggled. He doesn't have fluid motions on defense at all. Some guys are just born with it. Other guys develop it. But he's got very stiff hands. And he kind of, before he attacks the ball hitting, he lets the ball attack him. Field. McCray. Over first, the Athletics afraid that he's going to be taking off here, apparently. Blanchford very shallow at third base. It is 0-1 to Jeffries. Joyner is on deck. This ball, one ball, one strike. By the way, there are only three umpires out there now. Dave Phillips, who started the night at first base, has had to leave the game with a pulled calf muscle. So now you've got Rocky Rowe at first, and uh, Jim Joyce is uh, shuttling between the third and second right at the moment. He's at second right now. One and two the count. Thus there are three umpires in this match. Is that not from the Mary Wives of Windsor? Shakespeare? Huh? 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 Start quoting the classics on me now. <laughs> Only because I had to read it. See James Joyce there, the umpire at second, author of the famous novel, Portrait of the Young Umpire. <laughs> Portrait of the Umpire as a young man. Portrait of was his name Ulysses. <laughs> One and two the count. To Greg Jeffries. McCray at first. McGuire on the bag with it. And it is two and two now. Big crowd, 34,000. 139 at Royal Stadium. They were enjoying themselves uh, very much. The Royals are putting on a good show. The chicken was here entertaining between innings. And then reality set in. The Oakland Athletics with the big inning, and they are a big inning ball club. This could be two. Weiss to it for one. Back to first. Two. Double play. Side is retired. We'll see McGuire, Steinbach, and Fox when we come back. Six to two, Oakland. Two, the Athletics lead the Royals. Uh, Sunday night baseball from Royal Stadium in Kansas City. Good evening to you. This is John Miller along with Dave Campbell. Joe Morgan will be back with us next week. And now Steve Shifflett has joined us. A new pitcher for the Royals in the seventh. And he throws a strike to Mark McGuire. See Shifflett's uh, numbers there. A lot of walks. And a base hit for McGuire. Well, he started the six-run sixth inning with a single to the left against Baron Gare. Now he okay, does the same thing off. here, leading off in the seventh. Let's see if he starts anything this time. McGuire likes the ball about thigh high, and so he can get lift. That ball right there is going to be right in his zone, even a little lower. He's got an uppercut swing. He loves the ball down. This could be two. Jeffrey to second one. Wilkerson into first two, and Steinbach hits into a pair. Now he gets a double play, and inning later. Well, one of the differences this time, Greg Jeffries is moving to his left, and it's a much easier to play. He's really had problems with the ball hit straight at him. You can see this ball is hit to his left. Greg going to his left, much easier play to throw to second base. And he's on target to Curtis Wilkerson this time. Routine double play. The ball that's given him trouble has been the one hit directly at him or to his right. He's really struggled with that one. Two down, nobody on. Here is Eric Fox up for the first time. 
dramatic moment that was when Fox hit the three run homer. Now he bunts, but foul. Ninth inning last Wednesday. Oakland trying to sweep the first place Minnesota Twins. First place was at stake that night. And against Aguilera, one of the top closers around, he hit a three run homer. And it was a no doubt or two. And the thing I liked about the youngster, he didn't really display any fist pumping or anything like that. He just put his head down and ran around the bases like the old timers do. He said, I mean, his philosophy is don't make them notice you next time, maybe they'll knock you down. He's had problems with a strained shoulder lately, which uh, fits right in with this Oakland ball club. Everybody has some kind of injury problems. That's a drive deep in the right field. And this one is a home run. Seven to two, Oakland. And in Minneapolis, they're still saying, even right this moment, who is this guy? This kid only hit seven home runs in double A ball this year. He's hit three since he has come up. He hit the first one off Juan Guzman, arguably the best pitcher in the American League right now. Hits his second one against Rick Aguilera, and this time he gets Steve Shiplett, who throws him a slider down and in, in the hitting zone, and this kid just lifts it out of here. So he has been a great surprise for the Oakland A's. He will turn 29 in 13 days. So he has not exactly been an overnight sensation. He worked hard to get here as Willie Wilson takes a strike. Made all the stops, Salinas, Chattanooga, Vermont, Huntsville, Tacoma, two years at Tacoma. And now he gets a, a, a look at the show, and he's a hit. Now, no matter what happens in the rest of Eric Fox's career, he's going to remember this July and August is a very special time in his life. He's made a great contribution to this ball club. Tony LaRusso, I was talking to Tony before the game, and I said, Tony, I think this is your best managing job ever. And he says, Davey says, but if we don't win it, nobody will remember. Curtis Wilkerson throws out Willie Wilson. Oakland gets one. Wally Joyner and George Brett coming up. We'd like to extend our congratulations to those three as well. No deserve in all three cases, and uh, long overdue in the case of Hal Newhouser. I agree. I mean, the only pitcher to ever win MVP awards back-to-back -back seasons. A lot of people said the Warriors, but hey, 1946, he won 20-plus games as well. Almost won three straight MVP awards. Wally Joyner, the hitter. Little pop fly. Shallow center could be trouble. But there is Bordick for out number one. Eric Fox out of Fresno, California, Tom Seaver's hometown. And Eric Fox making some noise in the show. Guy okay, Hansen said Steve Shiffler doesn't have a pitch to get out left-handed batters, and Eric Fox proves him right by using a nice short, quick swing. And John, you mentioned it in the break. This kid's got a very compact swing. Happy? Yeah, he says. Hey, it's hot in Kansas City, but I know it's real hot in Fresno right now. Yeah, saluting them all in Fresno. He and his wife still live in Fresno in the offseason. A lot of ball players come from Fresno. George Brett, the hitter, he is two for three tonight. Downs 62 hits away. Another Bulldog alum with the Fresno State MVP last year, Terry Pendleton. Matt Corrales went to Fresno State. Brett. Number two, Brett is two for four. Let's go to Chris Myers. Thanks, John. In rainy Texas, the Angels try to rally against the Rangers. Ken Overfell drops in the base hit. Luis Polonia coming around to score. The throw is in time to Ivan Rodriguez. Polonia comes in hard but clean, and Rodriguez doesn't like it. He throws his mask. No one ejected. Right now, they're in a rain delay. Texas up two to one. All right, Chris. And here we've got two down and nobody on for Kansas City in the seventh. Eisenreich the hitter against Welch. And he takes a strike. Eisenreich has grounded out and twice his flight out into the shallow reaches of the outfield. Oh, and on the count. That's a base hit to left field for Eisenreich. And that's 11 hits for Kansas City. Getting hits has not been a problem. But doing anything with them has been something else again. Talking to Jim Eisenreich, he says, how do you guys pick that Sunday night game? And I said, well, about a year ahead of time. And I said, why? He says, well, my wife Leanne is in a roller skating competition in Lincoln, Nebraska. And with the off day tomorrow, I could have gone there. I said, hang with him, Jim. Tough luck. <laughs> a lot of the Royals are going to be playing in George Brett's golf tournament tomorrow to benefit ALS. So the Royals will be teeing it up in a different venue tomorrow. Two down, and here is Brent Maine. Well, 
34,000 uh, folks managed to find their way to Royal Stadium tonight on a Sunday night. As it turned out Eisenreich uh, could have gone tonight. He's not uh, contributed to the cause much. He had a chance to drive in a run back in the third inning with flying to shallow center. He had Brett on first in the fifth and flying to shallow left. I think that's probably what he was telling Lynn Jones, the first base coach. He saw him talking to him. He says, now I get the hits. Two outs, nobody on. One of those nights for the Royals. And Brett takes high. Oakland is doing it all at once. A six runs, sixth inning. Punching uh, five hits with a walk. Capping it off with a home run by Lansford. After Hal McCray made the fateful pitching move, getting out the soft-tossing rookie left-hander, Moeller, for the hard-throwing veteran right-hander, Baron Gare. But it wasn't Baron Gare's night. Two and one the count. Bob Welch right about at the 80 pitch mark. Great work for him. Very efficient here with two outs in the seventh inning. Be interesting to see if he gets out of this inning, whether LaRusso might go to Parrott for an inning and then Eckersley to finish it off. We'll have to see if he can get by Brent Main, though. Down the left field line, but foul. And in amongst the spectators. There is uh, the Yak, even as you speak of it, in the dugout. Yep, and ready to make that trip to the bullpen shortly. Yeah, Dennis right on cue. He never comes to the bench until the seventh inning. He sits for a half inning, and then he goes to the pen. And they are 83 pitches for Welch. So he's only uh, had two strikeouts and has not walked but just one. That was Howard back in the fourth inning. And it is three and two here to Brent Main. Curtis Wilkerson, two for three, is on deck. Let's see if McGuire will go back behind. He is going to go behind Eisenreich. You know Jim's going to be running three and two and two outs. You want to try to cut down that hole on the right side. So Mark McGuire will move in behind the runner. There is uh, Wilkerson awaiting his turn on deck, hoping to bat here in the seventh. Oakland leading seven to two. There goes Eisenreich. And there's Mark, Mark McGuire. And he might well not have been able to get to that ball had he been holding the runner. Seven to two, Oakland at the end of seven. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball is brought to you by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. And by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Sunday Night Baseball from Kansas City. Wave if you love Sunday Night Baseball and watch every Sunday. Yeah, I knew it. Here we go to the eighth inning. This is John Miller with Dave Campbell. Next Sunday, Joe Morgan will be back. And uh, he will be in Wrigley Field, the friendly confines. Bobby Bonilla cracked a rib today in a ball game against the Cubs. Don't look for him next Sunday, but Eddie Murray will be there. Ryan Sandberg, Mark Grace, and the Chicago Cubs. Andre Dawson, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. Next Sunday night on ESPN. And uh, Dave Campbell will be with Gary Thorne Wednesday for a big ball game in a pennant race. As here we go, Bordick thrown out by Jeffries. First ball swinging is Bordick here in the eighth inning. He is now 0 for 2 with two walks. 7 to 2 Oakland ahead. Wednesday night, you and Gary will be there for the Reds and the Braves. It should be Tim Belcher and Steve Avery, unless uh, the Braves with that doubleheader got their pitching a little messed up. But whatever, it'll be a terrific night down at Fulton County. I'm sure it'll be sold out. One out and nobody on, and here is Walt Weiss. Pittsburgh Pirates have gotten themselves straightened out here lately. Strike call to Weiss. Cardinals, though, have dropped 13 of 17 since the All-Star break. And if you look at the raw numbers, St. Louis, pretty good numbers in the ERA. They got four hitters over 300 in the lineup, but just not putting it together. Cardinals right now, one of the primary reasons the Pirates got themselves straightened out. First time the Bucks have swept a four-game series against St. Louis since 1962. Mm. Two and one the count. Walt Weiss singled home two runs in the sixth inning. Given the go ahead on a 3 1 pitch with the bases loaded. And Oakland trailing two to one. Talk about a clutch hit. Doesn't seem like much now because it is seven to two, but that was awfully big at the time. He has walked here. And of course, yours truly said he should be taking, right? 
tells you how much I know. No, no, no. You just said you speculated that most likely LaRusso would have him take. Well, most likely. Yeah, probably well. a lot of managers would have, don't you think? He's your ninth place hitter. Ninth place hitter, struggling with the bat, but maybe Tony decided, hey, I've got to get this guy on track. Uh, Weiss was nine for his last 52. The designated but hitter, Ricky I guess Henderson. Tony figured Walt would be discerning enough that the pitch wasn't in the strike zone. He wouldn't go hacking, and he turned him loose, and it was a big play in the game. I mean, but just think about it. The guy's not hitting well. One well, this season, I mean, he's had a very good record in clutch situations in his career, but terrible this year. And LaRusso had him swing. All of the indicators would say, don't swing. But the Russo said swing, and it worked out beautifully. Two runs scored on the swing. And as long as that happened, we say Tony, manager of the year. If we didn't have a double play, we wouldn't have said anything. <laughs> That's right. But then again, there had to be something that he that gave Tony the confidence that it would work out all right. Well, he is a player's manager. That's a phrase used a lot in baseball now. In fact, most of the managers, I think, in today's game are players-type managers. They also know the pressure from the agents. Uh, guy's got to put the numbers up to get the money, so most of the time the hitters are hitting. Ricky Henderson hits one into right center. McCray has it. Ricky Henderson is 0 for 4, but with a run battered in, he had a sacrifice fly in that six run sixth inning. John, it used to be in, in baseball, you're down three to one or four to one late in the ball game, leading off an inning, you go two balls, no strikes. I mean, you didn't have to look down, you knew you were taking, but in this day and age, they turn them loose, they swing the bats. Now here is Carney Lansford, He's grounded a third, lined to shallow right center, grounded a second, and then he had a two-run homer to cap that six-run run. Strike one from Steve Schiffler, and it is 0-1. I remember Don Robinson, right at the All-Star break, he decided to retire. Pitched his last game in San Diego that night for the Phillies. And he was talking about Jim Leland of the Pirates. And he said, hey, he is the best manager I've ever seen. And the reason is, is that he puts a player always in the best situation for that player to have a chance to succeed. So he got a lot of those ideas from Tony La Russa when he worked in Chicago for Tony. Tony's the one, along with Roland Heeman, that gave him a chance to come to the big leagues after 16 years in the minors. We're talking about Jimmy Leland. But La Russa gave him a chance to coach third base. They're still very best friends. They communicate an awful lot. Tony has the same philosophy. I know Dave Duncan was talking about Gene Nelson earlier in the year, who has really been struggling the last two years. And Dave said, all we're trying to do is get him in a situation or two where he can just face one batter and succeed. We want success, and that really builds confidence in our players, and that's what we like. On oh, to the count to communicate with the players. The player hasn't played. The manager will take him aside. So you are playing on such and such a date when they have such and such going. Absolutely. We talked about young Dennis Moeller and getting confidence, but the veterans, when things are going poorly for them, they need to get that confidence back, too. Strike three called on the outside corner. We go to the last of the eight, seven to two, Oakland. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the famous Jackson. Tonight from Royal Stadium in Kansas City, ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. The Oakland Athletics in second place in the American League West. Back of the Minnesota Twins. Minnesota won its ball game earlier today, five to nothing over Milwaukee. And Oakland needing a victory to stay a game and a half. And despite all of the best efforts of the famed ah. chicken. To put the whammy on the Athletics, Oakland is ahead 7-2, building the lead with a six-run, sixth inning. And then the veteran Bob Welch working his wizardry without that uh, fastball of old. Curtis Wilkerson with a fly ball. Curtis has been hot all weekend, two hits tonight, but he is out on one pitch here. Just what you were talking about, Dave, 7-2, why... Go right up there and, and, and what uh, one manager once described as a hurry up and make an outswing. Well, one base on balls for Bob Welch. He's been around the plate all night. I guess maybe Hal McRae, who was a hitter himself, says, go ahead, guys, go to hacking. Maybe a better chance to hit the first pitch for a base hit. But, you know, again, baseball has changed. Not always for the best, not always for the worst, but it has changed. Here is uh, Kozlowski. He drove in Kansas City's first round with a single in the second. He's grounded out and uh, struck out since then, one for three. Not quite as team-oriented. I know Brent Braggs was talking the other day, and, uh, you know, he was getting got a take sign one time or something like that, and he says, you know, they want you to be team-oriented, but at the end of the season when you come in for your contract and they ask you what you've done individually. Eric Fox, long run, got to it, out number two. I think Braggs... Talk, think, think Braggs was talking about the fact that uh, he hadn't been getting a lot of playing time, and he said he wanted to get traded. The center fielder, Brian McRae. 
Don't forget, right after the ball game, Sports Center with Keith Olbermann and Dan Patrick. The Braves going for first and will be at the uh, the top of the program. Tom Seaver, Raleigh Fingers, Hal Newhouser into the Hall of Fame. The Twins with their victory earlier. All of that, the whole day in sports on Sports Center right after the ball game. And congratulations to our broadcasting colleague Milo Hamilton, who went into the broadcast with me as well today. The Ford C. Frick Award. Great day for Milo. And we're all very happy for him. Milo, been broadcasting baseball for what? Nearly 40 years now. Now the voice of the Houston Astros. Best known for the call on the Henry Earn number seven for Hey, could be. <laughs> he was there. He's a new home run leader of all time, and it's Henry Aaron. One and two the count to uh, Brian McRae. Each team has 11 hits in the game. Kansas City with two runs and 11 hits. But Kansas City has never had more than three hits in a single inning. They did that only one time. That was in the third, and they got one run out of it. So Welch has really spread them out. The Royals have failed to get a hit tonight. Never. They've had at least one hit in every inning. Welch with two down and nobody on here. That is foul. And John, once again, it's not the guys you'd expect. It's not the McGuire's and the Conseco's. Ricky Henderson does has driven in one with a sacrifice fly, but Lanford with a two-run homer. Walt Weiss with a big hit. Eric Fox off the bench with a key home run see Fox back that six spot in the order the A's have had three guys hit there ready and Baines and Fox and those guys are four for four between them so they're getting good productivity out of that six hole tonight one ball two strikes to Brian McRae Locked him up Bob Brown Steinbach he's got it the Royals down without a run for the first time can Seiko and McGuire coming up Seven, the Kansas City Royals, two. Here we go to the ninth inning now. You see the total. Seven runs, 11 hits for Oakland. Two runs, 11 hits. And there's uh, Jose Canseco. Wouldn't they like that? Wouldn't 11 singles sandwich around Jose Canseco in your batting order look a little nicer for the Royals? There's uh, one Royals fan who's wishing Canseco with a count of one ball and no strikes. He has walked, doubled, struck out, and grounded out. One for three, facing Steve Shiflett, who is from Kansas City. Shiflett born right here, the local guy. Attended uh, Longview Community College and then Emporia State. Went to Pleasant Hill High School in Missouri. He was not drafted. They signed him in 1989, and here he is. One of the home folks. 3-0 to Canseco. McGuire will follow then Steinbach. And uh, ball four to Jose. Shiflett got off to a nice start with the Royals when he first came up, but then they went on a road trip to Cleveland, and Carlos Baerga beat him twice, once with a single and once with a home run in the bottom half of innings, and he's been on the rocks ever since. He's really struggled in the last two weeks. Sports Center, right after the ball game. Stay tuned. Don't miss it. Now, Jerry Brown is going to pinch it for Mark McGuire. We're not going to see McGuire. So, McGuire, after going two for three with a walk, we'll... Get a little time off as the Athletics look at and a trip down to the Dallas-Fort Worth area where they open a series tomorrow against the slugging Texas Rangers. Well, Tony has wanted to try to give Mark McGuire some time off. He's bothered a little bit with a knee problem, but with everybody else injured, McGuire's been going to the post every day, and I don't know if this is just a chance to rest Mark for an inning or maybe he strained something running the bases or on that play where he started to go to after the bunt. Could have happened, but we'll just have to wait and see on this. And ball one to Jerry Brown from uh, St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Jerry Brown, when he came up with Texas, they called him Governor Jerry Brown. The go. And that's a ball. 2 and 0 the count. Brown has been another one of those guys. We haven't really mentioned him much tonight. 267 batting average. He has been sort of the, the new Tony Phillips. Really, yeah, the Athletics. Very versatile. He and Randy Reddy give their club a lot of versatility. Not great at any one position, but a master of a lot of them. He was always a second baseman. And now he's learned how to play third base, the outfield, even some first base. That is the ball. Three and one to the governor. Terry Steinbach is on deck. 
The Athletics, uh, when you look at their starting pitchers, not any one jumps out at you where you say, well, there's the ace. Always in the past, it was Dave Stewart or Bob Welch. And in many of those years, there were three guys who would jump out at you. I mean, Stewart was always a given, and Welch would get his wins. Mike Moore would get his wins. And then sometimes a Storm Davis or a Scott Sanderson would be mixed in. Base hit for Jerry Brown. Canseco will go to second and hold. Well, John, you go back to, of course, 1990, that magical year for Welch and Stewart. 49 wins between them. Last year, they fell the off to 23, and this year, the two of them have 15 between them with all the injuries. So, La Russa, I mean, at one time, they just A's were just so dominant in every area. Now they've become, uh, instead of mere mortals, they've become mere. <laughs> they've become mortals. And Tony La Russa really having to do some managing. There you see Welch and Stewart's numbers. 1990. And for Welch and Stewart, not just a question of not that many wins, uh, often not a question of not even available to win. As we said, Welch on the DL for the whole first month of the season, and then Stewart has just come back from the disabled list recently. Somebody's going to have to come to the, the forefront. Lately, it has been Welch. With a win tonight, he will have won seven of his last nine. One ball, one strike to Steinbach, who is one for four in the game. Two on, nobody out in the ninth inning. Oakland ahead, seven to two. Shiplett, the fourth Kansas City pitcher. Shallow right, here is Eisenreich. Out number one. Steinbach trying to hit the ball the other way, but just inside out of a lazy fly ball out towards Eisenreich. Can take no chance to advance. Now, Eric Fox will come up again. Fox uh, still looking for his first hit. When the Athletics were playing the Toronto Blue Jays a while back, not last weekend, but earlier. And after they had faced David Wells in a ball game, he went to a local uh, spot, played a little pool. That could be two. Jeffries the second for one. Wilkerson back to first, not in time. Canseco takes third in the play. Well, Fox. I was talking to this guy, he says, tomorrow, I'm going to get my first base hit. I know it. Juan Guzman's going for Toronto. That will be the day I'll get my first hit. He said, I'm just trying to get some positive imaging here going. Well, as he kept talking to the guy, it came to him all of a sudden. This guy is David Wells, the guy I just <laughs> faced tonight. But Wells uh, said, I won't tell anybody about it. And then the next day, not only did Fox get his first hit, it was a home run against Juan Guzman. Here's... Uh, Willie Wilson now. Not too shabby, John. Get your first hit against a pitcher of that elk and a home run to boot. He had the three homers, 10 RBIs, and 60 at-bats for the Athletics, says Eric Fox. Willie Wilson right up the middle, base hit. That will be his second RBI of the game. Willie drove in Oakland's first run when they were being shut out back in the sixth inning with a single. And now he repeats that. Two RBIs for Willie Wilson. It is eight to two Oakland. Well, a man who the Kansas City Royals let go has come back to haunt him a little bit. A guy who was never expected to play as much as he has this year, but he's been a great player for the Oakland Athletics while Dave Henderson's been out. He's really filled the bill. You saw the great catch he made to save a couple of runs tonight. Two big plays in the game. That catch and the big strikeout of Kozlowski in the fifth inning by Welch. Those have been the two plays that turned it around on the defensive side for the Oakland A's. at second, Wilson at first, Bordick the hitter. Bordick is over two with two walks. One ball, one strike. Eight to two, the Athletics have turned it into a lapper here at Royal Stadium. And Royal Stadium, which was filled with 34,000 people. Many have gone home, and the ones who are here are very, very quiet. That's the inning as Fox is forced out. Eight to two, Oakland. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball's Game of the Week. Tonight from Royal Stadium in Kansas City, the Oakland Athletics limping into this series finale, having been beaten two straight days by the Royals, but uh, the Athletics, after being shut out for five by the rookie Dennis Moeller tonight, turned it around with a six-run, sixth inning, and now they go to the last of the ninth, leading eight to two. This is John Miller for Dave Campbell, Joe Morgan, off cavorting with the baseball immortals of which he is one up in Cooperstown. Joe will be back next Sunday when we greet you from Wrigley Field. And now here is a native New Englander, Jim Corsi, 
Time to pitch for the Athletics in the ninth inning. As Bob Welch, eight innings. And then really, and, and you touched on it earlier, Dave, could uh, pay off tomorrow or the next day in Texas where the innings pitched by Welch and the night off given to the rest of the bullpen with those uh, slugging Texas Rangers uh, into the Oakland bullpen will be able to win a ball game where they otherwise might not have. Well, the key, of course, is to get Corsi through this inning. Jerry Brown takes over at third base as the A's pinch hit for Mark McGuire and Carney Lansford. His versatility showing here moves on to first. But you're right, of course, he can get out of this inning. Eckersley will get a little work in the bullpen available if needed. You see Dennis throwing. He just wants to get a little throwing in. He has not pitched since pitching three days in a row in Minnesota, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. But the situation has not dictated him being in games, but he's going to throw on the side. And then, just in case, of course, he gets in trouble, he'll be ready. The batter is David Howard. All of Kansas City's left-handed hitters, or pinch, or, or rather switch hitters, are in the lineup tonight. Of course, he throws him a strike. So, with the right-hander in there, the only men off the bench that Hal McCray could go to are right-handed hitters. Howard has lined out to right center, walked and flied to shallow center. Rather ironic that Corsa, that uh, rather Howard, who's hitting 163, is the only man that Bob Welch walked tonight. Why would he walk in? Sports Center right after the ball game. Stay tuned. Oakland ahead here, 8 to 2, ninth inning. Base hit. David Howard. Well, he got a hit. He hit it real hard. Hit number 12 for Kansas City. Ten of them singles, including each of the last ten. Well, Howard hit that ball that Willie make uh, Willie uh, Wilson made the circus catch on in center field. So David finally gets into the hit column. Royals trying to stir up something here against Jim Corsi and force the A's to have to bring Eckersley in. Now Greg Jeffries. He is one for four. third base Brown shallow Lansford plays behind the runner at first and there's a strike Corsi is uh, from Newton Massachusetts and uh, attended college in Florida at St. Leo College St. Louis Leo, when you think of St. Louis uh, in an athletic sense you think of St. Leo as one of those teams that Georgetown plays in basketball in <laughs> early <laughs> early December yeah he was a coach down in St. Louis for a while. I think it was Mike Marshall, the former Dodger pitcher, expo pitcher. I think he coached down there. Oh, yeah. But I don't know if Corsi played for him. So, of course, he once had a, uh, an eight and two-thirds uh, perfect game going and then gave up a hit, finished with a one-hitter against Rolling College. Mm. What state's that in? <laughs> I got <gotcha>. you. Rolling. Rolling. <laughs> Extra bases for Jeffries. And Snakeo can't find it. A run scores and Jeffries to third. It is eight to three. He might be scored a double in an error. And Snakeo had some trouble picking it up. We'll wait for the official scoring. But Jim Corsi not getting it done right now. Carney Lansford, this is a case maybe where with the big lead, if had the game been close, Lansford would have been holding the runner on, and this ball probably would have been right at him. But playing behind the runner, trying to cut down the hole between first and second, one time it paid off when you saw McGuire get a ball. It looked like somebody had fired something at Jose. Jeffries comes steaming around, and they have scored in a double and an error. Double error to Canseco, but an RBI for Greg Jeffries. That is his 50th RBI of the year, and his 20, let's see, 29 doubles for him. Here is Joyner, who in the first inning hit his 30th double of the year, and he is two for four. He takes a strike. Eight to three, the score. Kansas City with 13 hits now. And Jeffries, two more hits. His hot streak continues. That'll get a run home. Walt Weiss just got him. RBI for Joyner. It is eight to four. Twice very acrobatic comes on, makes the off balance throw, and just gets Joyner by a step. First, a little tougher for Jim Corsi against the Kansas City Royals than it was when he faced Rolling College. Just barely got Joyner there. And here is George Brett. George is two for four, one out of the ninth inning, nobody on. 62 hits away from 3,000. 
Jones is going to have to hit around 300 and stay away from injury from here until the end of the year to get 3,000 by the end of the season. And that factors in if he, you know, takes a day off every once in a while. Made his Major League debut 19 years ago today against the Chicago White Sox. Who knew? As George himself said when he was in high school in Southern California, he's a very fine ball player at that same high school, Scott McGregor. Had a great career as a left-handed starting pitcher for Baltimore. And Brett has always said, hey, McGregor was a better hitter than me in high school. Foul ball. One and two the count. I suppose his older brother Kenny was a better hitter than him too. Ken Brett was an excellent hitting pitcher for many years. The uh, Brett Ometer, 62 hits down from 3,000. Kind of reminds me of those old-time scoreboards like at Wrigley Field and Fenway Park. I mean, this guy doesn't have any fancy electronic things. He's just not, you know, X through it. <laughs> His little board makes uh, the Wrigley Field board look like state of the art. <laughs> if he's uh, marketing those here in Kansas City. George Brett, three times a batting champ. Very high. Two and two. And of course, the most recent, in some ways, the most satisfying for George, 1990, because the first half of the season he was abysmal. He thought about retiring. It was so bad. And then he hit about 380 after the break to win a batting title. Two and two. Three and two to count. It was just a matter of all of a sudden he was so down and thought his reflexes and timing were off and then he looked at some films and realized all of a sudden he was just jumping out at the pitcher was causing his head to move a lot. He's always had great vision. But once he found that flaw in his swing and started to stay back, I mean, he lit up the American League the last half of 1990. Three and two to George. Eisenreich on deck. Drives one deep to right. Can Seiko back? He's there and he's got it. George hit that one with the top spin. It began fading near the bullpen. And Ken Sicker was able to catch up to it. Looked like he was getting a little grief from those uh, Royals bullpenners out there. They were hollering at him. <laughs> That's Jeff Montgomery, the number 21. Meanwhile, the Eck taking it easy down in the Oakland bullpen. You know, Eck can get heated in a hurry, and Tony La Russa, if he wants the Eck, can stall with the best of them. So Dennis is throwing enough. If he has to get back out, he probably only needs about seven or eight more pitches to get totally loose. He knows his own arm. Vince Horseman is up out there. Two down in the ninth inning. Eyes and right. A ball. La Russa's got pretty good uh, performance from his two lefties this year. Uh, the young Canadian, Vince Horseman, and the, the veteran left hand is very definitely not young. Rick Honeycutt has been around forever, it seems like. Yeah, Honeycutt's still done a good job with the uh, left-handed batters. He's struggled against the righties because he doesn't have the same kind of stuff he used to. Eight to four, Oakland, last of the night. Jim Corsi. Not the way he wanted it to, to finish. He struggled. There's a changeup for a strike. Two and one. Jim Corsi stands 6'1 and is listed at 210 pounds. Signed originally by the Yankees. Right to third to Jerry Brown. And Lansford pulls it out. And Oakland wins the final game of the series, 8-4, and remains one and a half back of the Minnesota Twins. Bob Welch the winner. And Juan Berenguer the loser. Lansford and Fox with a home run. Now stay tuned. Sports Center is next. John Miller for Dave Campbell. We'll see you next Sunday from Wrigley Field in Chicago. 8-4 Oakland now. Good night, everyone.